many miles we walk The many things we learn The building of a shrine Only just to burn May the wind be at your back May the cards lay out a strain All from your command That's the way it is That's the way I'll catch up. Keep riding and don't look back. Don't be worried about me, you hear? Now get going. You stay out of trouble, John. Ain't no trouble, Abigail. Ain't no trouble. I love you. I love you. Now go! Get! <laughs>
It would mean a lot to me. All this, all this wouldn't exist if it weren't for Arthur, Sadie, and all the folks as fell. If I let him go, this place ain't no more real than, than one of Jack's dragons. I'm begging you. I'm begging you to understand. This is it. This is Reeves. Hello, Scarface. Did you miss me? Not much. It's over, Abigail. It's all over. <laughs> 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 Mark my words on this. Vengeance is an idiot's game. I cannot believe we're sleeping in the house. The house we own. Just so goddamn strange. Nice stranger. Nasty. Strange. <laughs> Not strange. <laughs> Just wipe the tears away for that one. Jesus. What an amazing tribute that was. You can find that video link in the description. Guys, welcome to my chat with Rob Weedolf, aka John Marston, the legend himself. An amazing guy. I can't wait to talk all things Red Dead gaming, movies, TV with this absolute icon, this absolute legend. How you all doing, guys? If you're new around here, I... Uh, I'm Dan, and uh, I'm a YouTuber from Australia, and I love to interview all these voice actors and actors, actors within video games, and in this case, Rob is an actor, I mean, how many days of performance capture, motion capture did this man do, we'll ask him everything, I hope you're all well safe. Who have we got in here today? Jackson, Tahiti Man, Bonnie, Mr. Puss, Stella, Thomas, Franklin, Matthew, Gabe, Luke, Noam, Krona, Re Reba, Killmonger, Mona, Jackson, Hajar, Blake. Absolute legends. I think we can get straight into it, guys. Rob's ready, I'm ready. What do you reckon? Oh man, I love this song. American Venom, baby. American Venom. And guys, also let me know, who, who else do you want? We've just done, obviously, Dutch, aka Benjamin Davis. I've had a chat with Arthur Morgan himself, Rob. Rob. <laughs> Roger Clark. So, and now we're doing Rob. We've done the big th hitting three. Who's next? You let me know, guys. All right. Let's stop beating around the bush. 
By the way, thank you for becoming a member, AD3. Really, really appreciate it, mate. And you'll be joining this list. This list of incredible members, the Onion Hall of Fame, the members of the channel. I will, um, I've still got to add Xgar, but if you're in here, brother, I'm sorry. You two will be joining this list, the Onion Hall of Fame, hey? <laughs> All right, guys, let's, let's stop beating around the bush. Let's get Rob in, I hope. I hope you enjoy this interview with me and Rob. I think it's going to be an absolute blast. I will answer some of your questions, send them through. Uh, and I'll try to get to as many as possible once things we get things settled. All right, guys. I'll uh, I'll report back after the interview. I hope you really enjoy. Sir Lockmain, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Hey, what's happening? Rob, brother. <laughs> what's hey. going on? Woo. <laughs> How are you, brother? Great to uh, see you. Great to meet you finally. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you so much for having me on. This is awesome. Thanks so much for taking the time. How's your day been so far? So far, man, it's great. We've got beautiful, beautiful weather. Um, it's starting to warm up outside around here, and I am so happy about it. It's it's fall where you live now, right? Well, it's uh, in Australia. It's just always raining here in Melbourne. It's just been pouring down. So our our weather's just rain. Then the next day, in the same day, it can be rain from sunshine to all the elements. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah. So, um, where are you based out of again? I live in Indiana. Indiana. And, uh, yeah, nobody really knows where that is. It's one of the, <laughs> even even if you live in the United States, people, it's a flyover state. It's not on the coast. So, who cares? You know, that's kind of the way they look at it. <laughs> so, did you grow uh, up there or what? Yeah. Yeah. I grew up here and uh, I went to college in Indiana and then kind of moved around a little bit and found myself in LA for almost 10 years and then met my wife there and we decided that we wanted to start a family and we did not want to do it in LA. So <laughs> yeah, she, she grew up there and she knew, she knew more about it than I did, but she said, yeah, I don't, you're always in the car. You know, there's always traffic. It's always just, it's expensive. And yeah. so we moved back to my hometown where my family is. So so are you near the city or way, way out? Uh, the, the closest city is Indianapolis, and it's probably an hour's drive or a little bit more. But Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, it's pretty laid back where I live. There's not a whole lot going on. It's not real exciting. But, but is I that what you this, prefer? At this point in my life, I'm okay with it, yeah. I mean, I did enjoy L.A. when I was there, and I lived in Chicago for a while. Um, and I, I did enjoy that busy, um, really just everywhere you look, there's something to see, you know, but now I've got a wife and two kids and I'm pretty happy being pretty boring, really. <laughs> <laughs> How old are your kids, brother? They're nine. They're twin boys. Identical. Wow. Twin. Yeah, man. So they're nine. Red. So they they haven't played Red Dead yet. No, <laughs> not yet. They haven't. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. What age you reckon? It's, I don't even know. I mean, it's a weird deal because my wife, my wife is so thrown off when I, if I've ever played it and she hears it because she hears my voice and then she'll come and look at it and go, Oh no, 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 that's not. <laughs> I don't look so much like John. I mean, I guess but he moves like me because of the performance. Oh, yeah. It's one of those weird things for her where she's just like, I can't. And then, and then if she's in the other room, she'll hear 
John yelling, and she doesn't know if it's John yelling or me yelling. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they, so you get to wait till they're a bit older, I guess. Yeah, I think so. I think we'll we'll just see how long we can ride it out, and uh, they don't they don't seem to have any interest. So I'm not going to push In, it on them. That's true. Do they play games at all? No, they really don't. Really? Wow. No. There you go. And I don't either. And I hate to say that. I feel like I should. I feel like I should be a gamer, um, but I'm not. And and I I don't know why I feel guilty about that, but I kind of do when I say it out loud. You probably feel um, guilty because Ben and Roger have both, you know, smashed both games out. Do you know what I mean? And you're sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm... And I'll and I tell you, I did play. I got snowed out of work. Um a month ago or so maybe who knows when it was but i thought i can't i can't do anything i can't even do anything around here because around home because it was so we oh had really a foot of snow on the ground and uh, you can't can't really go anywhere you can't so i i sat down and i played the first chapter of red dead redemption 2 and it was so much fun but the thing is each time i would sit down i swear i was there for 10 minutes maybe but it would be two hours had gone by and I thought <laughs> I just don't have I don't have time I loved it but I'm I don't have time also I'm terrible at it and so it's frustrating I don't know how to use the controller <laughs> so you know like you you got one knob that that kind of shows where you're looking <laughs> or you're facing but then the oh, other one okay you get you get the perspective wrong do you oh the yeah. camera angle yeah and it's real it's in the middle of a gunfight and i'm looking up into the sky and i can't figure out why (laughs) (laughs) so we're not going to see you streaming the game anytime soon no unless you want to get seasick or something yeah it would be terrible i love the background you got there the little shrine man How, how big is this room you're in with like is this the shrine room this is it yeah and yeah. believe it or not it used to be a chicken coop <laughs> <laughs> it's no joke, man. I'll show you I, heard people, I saw people say that in the chat he's gonna be live yeah. from the chicken coop and i didn't think they were being serious but there you go that's yeah, awesome man. man yeah and it's uh i've got this ridiculous setup here it looks like a diving board but i had to get this oh, that's that? my tv oh right a projector now. projection screen i got this crazy light here that i don't know how to use but anyway um yeah man it's so cool it's it's i can't have this in my house i can't you know but i have a chicken coop and we don't have chickens anymore so i said i'm taking it i'm taking that and making it my own and that's what i did that's amazing that's so this is the some of the stuff you've collected over the years hey yeah yeah. and you must have you must have had some amazing art and messages and over the years i mean unbelievable it's overwhelming and and the talent that so many people have i i want i want everyone to experience it you know and i i try to if i get something on instagram that i'm tagged in or something sent to me i try to post it in my story just to to share all this fantastic artwork with everyone who wants to see it because it's it's really really cool a lot of talent out there and it's i love it i love it and do you get any message like how many amazing messages have you got about, you know, how Red Dead helped change their life or things like that? Like, have you had many of those messages over the years? I I have. And yeah. uh, I think that it's, I, I love it. Of course, I love it. And um, it's, it really is touching. A lot of these are very touching. And you think, oh my goodness, I love that. You just, while we were in the production of any part of Red Dead Redemption, the series, yeah. I never ever imagined that anyone would ever tell me that John Marston saved my life or I John know. Marston, you know, because sometimes people need an escape from reality and, mm-hmm. and some people choose a video game and uh, maybe, you know, somebody played Red Dead Redemption before they played Red Dead Redemption 2. So they, they knew the story through John. Um, 100%. But yeah, it's, it's so cool. And not only... Are, are people giving me really cool messages and uh, sharing cool stories with me? But it seems to me that a lot of the the fans of the game are really cool to each other. And I love that It's a that great too. community, isn't it? 
Yes, I love that. It's just a really cool group of people enjoying something, got something in common, and hanging out, partying. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Are you missing those conventions because you because of COVID and all that? Yes, man, yeah. I am. Um, and it's just the thing. It's so great to be able to shake hands with people and and hear those stories face to face and share laughs with people and uh, you know all the things that you're able to do at a convention. But it's the one thing that's unfortunate about conventions is that it, so I get to go, Roger gets to go, Ben, Alex, you know, specific members of the gang have gone to different conventions around the world, which has been fantastic. But the all of the animators and the writers and the director all these yeah. people put so much work into it's almost not fair that we're the ones that get to go and experience all this really cool stuff I know because we mean. did a lot of work but we didn't do all of it you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. i know what you mean it is but, yeah they're the unsung heroes of the whole thing aren't they really oh my goodness they're amazing Fascinating. Over, over at rockstar i mean they're amazing the detail in those games is just it's mind-blowing isn't it it is. And it's also, uh, you know, the thing is about that environment, when you're there on set, the stage, the mocap stage, whatever you call it, it's um, people running around, rockstar employees running around all over the place, getting things done. Every one of them motivated, every one of them as cool as can be, not just with actors, but with each other. It's yeah. a really cool environment, and I think that's probably why they they put out such amazing quality because they they got a common goal. They know how to work together. They're supportive of each other. It's really inspiring, and and just being around that, um, I was I just just part of that part of the whole experience spoiled me rotten too because I've seen that and seen yeah that it's possible and that it's cool it's really cool well i will i will get to your questions guys watching i've still got a few more for rob here <laughs> I, I wanted to say mate like how are you so how are you so positive all the time like you just every time i see you man you're just so positive and loving and i just can't help but just think <laughs> man you are an inspiration really oh well, th well thank you for that i think i really appreciate it um you know, I think there's it's a combination of things, right? So um, I want to point out, and everybody knows this, but nobody's life is easy all the time. Nobody, I don't care who you are. Um, and so when I when I go on social media or, of course, something like this, I'm actually having a great day today. I mean, this is not fake. I'm enjoying this, and this is cool. <laughs> but a lot of times, I'll just try to uh, do something funny um, yeah. or – you know, if I ever see a post from someone who's looking for attention for something negative, yep. it, just, it just doesn't sit right with me. I think, ah, oh, I'm sorry that you need attention and that's how you're trying to get it. I'd never, I have never looked at that and thought, that's what I want to do. I just have. Mm -hmm. So social media, of course, I'm going to bring something different than that. Um but it's, I, I am a happy person too, though. I mean, in general, I, I enjoy my life. I know how lucky I am to be experiencing what I'm experiencing. I know that I, I won the lottery, basically. I know that. And, and I appreciate everything that I've, that I've gotten because of it. And um, I, don't, I don't deserve it. I, I enjoyed the work. I did my best. But to... Um, I think that's a bit hard. That's that's too humble, mate. You definitely deserve it. Come on. Well, well thank, <laughs> thank you. But I guess I guess what I'm saying is, um, yeah. it could have been it could have been so many other people. Yeah, in fact, I know they, what you mean. Yeah, they had some people in mind, and I don't know who they were, but originally to play John Marston, some some well known A list actor type people, and for whatever reason, those things didn't work out. So, uh, the they opened it up to whoever and I, it happened to be me, which I love, but again, it could have been so many other people. And I understand that. And I, I am trying to constantly recognize that you're lucky. And, and I am, I was chosen. It's awesome. Um, 
But I guess one one more thing is I'm 44 years old, so yeah, I you can't look a go good brother. Oh, well, thank you, man. Thank <laughs> you. I'm not, I'm not looking for any comfort, but my point is I can't try to be cool, like really try to be cool. I'm too old for that. Nobody's buying that. Nobody wants to see that. So <laughs> I'm happy when people call me dad or uncle or whatever. Yeah, right on. That's That's who I should be to you, and I'm happy to be that. That's where, that's my lane, I think. So, so. you you do, how do you balance the construction work? Because I know you do a lot of that with the, over the last 10 years with the, like, have you had to go back and forth or how do you, how does that work? Um, well, okay. So I had a job, <laughs> <laughs> I had a job at this company that was uh, like a corporate job, right? And um, it was still involved like construction type stuff, mm. but it was, I got it because I moved back to my hometown. I wasn't chasing, I wasn't trying to get auditions and try to book jobs anymore. I was, I was trying to be responsible the best way I knew how and get a job where I would have benefits and would be able to be home and be part of this family that we created yeah. and enjoy it. Um, so I was, I was doing that work when I got called from rockstar and I didn't know at first that I was going to work as long on Red Dead Redemption oh. 2 as I ended up working. I thought that maybe I would work for a year, but probably less. In fact, that's exactly what they told me. And I said, okay, yeah, that, that works. My wife and I talked about it. Wow. She knows how much I love the work and the people at yeah. Rockstar. And so she was really supportive and cool about it. Um, but so... so <laughs> The job that I had, you can't just come and go. It's a yeah, corporate yeah. job. You no. Know? Yeah. So I went for the first two weeks or something, the first shoot that I went on. And I used up all my sick days and vacation days in that one shoot. And then three <laughs> weeks later, <laughs> I, was back, I was going back to New York. So I said, um, I can't I can't even tell you why I'm leaving, but I'm leaving again. And this time for three weeks. And they said, oh, you can't you do can't that. I can't even say. Oh, no, my God. I forgot about that. Coach. It was like, this This is kind of bad. I mean, I, I can't give you a two weeks notice because I couldn't. I couldn't do that. Oh I had to leave. Goodness. Anyway, it worked out really well. I didn't really love that job. <laughs> 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 and of course, if, if Rockstar ever called me for anything, I would drop everything and say, yes, let's do this. I can't wait. But yeah. um, so that job ended. And, and then my brother-in-law, owns a construction company oh, we do nice. primarily concrete yeah i mean it's it's like hard work but it's really satisfying you work really hard and then at the end of the day every day you can see exactly what you got done so it's instant gratification and uh, yeah when you leave you leave it all there you don't have to take it home think about it you don't you know a lot and of you it keep fit really you keep very and you fit keep, wouldn't and you? paid to work out yeah yeah, and I wouldn't. Otherwise, I wouldn't. So <laughs> at least you're honest. Yeah. In five years, I'm going to be in the chicken <laughs> sitting in here. But uh, my brother-in-law understood I'm going to be coming and going, and he said, "Listen, I I could use an extra hand if if you're interested in working when you're in town. We'd love to have you." And I said, "Perfect." So I would go to New York for two or three weeks, whatever the shoot was, and then <clears throat> excuse me when I came back home i did construction work and did that throughout the whole process and now i'm I'm still there i'm still doing the construction work so so do the people that you work with like hear your voice and freak out or they're not gamers or what have you ever had experiences like that no i don't think so i don't no? if, if if that has happened i haven't been aware of it there have okay. been a couple of times where where people have said are you the guy that <laughs> that played in the video game yeah yeah, yeah, my friend was telling me about that. I don't play video games. So it's always kind of like a ah, yeah. somebody wants to talk about it, but then they all of a sudden don't know anything about it. So it also leaves me in a situation where I'm like, I I don't I don't need to talk about this. I, <laughs> you ask me, but you don't know. So it's kind of never been much of a thing. I don't know. Yeah, you. so you said that you were only supposed to be there for a year. I couldn't, I couldn't believe the fact that obviously we are going to spoil this guys if you, if you haven't played red dead one or two 
Um, in Red Dead Two, like you, Roger said that you shot all all those side missions and everything as well, in case the player hadn't done them as him. I, I just that's just insane to me. Absolutely yeah. insane. So great! It was so much fun, and uh, yeah, they they at a certain point had two stages. We started Red Dead Redemption Two at one location, and then moved to another location which was much much bigger and they were able to create two stages for us to work on at the same time wow. as opposed to just one and so um yeah we got what took five years would have taken probably eight years or better i don't know we were able to do double the the work because we had two stages and um right that are you working helped. simultaneously oh, yeah 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 oh, right and there were times where it would be a problem if there, there's a lot of yelling. Of course, from John, there's a lot of yelling. Arthur <laughs> didn't use John sometimes, but uh, <laughs> you would hear sometimes you would hear just enough to have the sound person say, "Yeah, we gotta we gotta do that again." Just this one part though, or whatever. So it, for the yeah. most part, it worked out really, really well. But yeah, we we had to do the performance capture roger did more than i did of these yeah, scenes yeah. where it could be either one of arthur or john but the thing about it was because we both have been playable characters people know the way that we move because you walk right oh, you're I know. Walking us down, right so yeah if if it was me doing the performance capture for a scene that roger then later would do a voiceover over my physical movement whatever to to make it arthur then they would say now remember you don't walk like john but also don't try to walk like arthur because you're not very good at it <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I would find myself thinking uh, i want to remember these lines and i want to get this right but i'm now i'm trying to not walk like me but also not it was some of it was really it was all really fun and it really oh. cool people. It, it was must have been a blast. I mean, all those guys that I've talked to so far, they've all got such nasty things to say about you. Seriously, they couldn't stand <laughs> working with you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, uh, we we made such a great bond together. I mean, I yeah. I think that because of our non disclosure agreements, but also the the truth is we're still good friends. All yeah. of us. We have a mass text chain going and we were today there we were on it yeah 50 messages i mean it's it's common awesome. we're in touch all the time yeah and i love it that we've all got to share this experience together it's been really really cool and it makes a difference i think with the chemistry on screen yeah i think it does too i mean I absolutely understand. it the funny thing is you know you got like of course micah bell right and it's easy to hate Micah Bell. Easy. But Peter, who played Peter Blumquist, who played Micah Bell, mm. is the most likable, fun, honestly yeah. cool guy you could ever meet. Yeah. And so it's yeah. uh it's fascinating to to know some, you know, both the character and the person as well as we all know each other. Yeah. And and be able to enjoy that too. Fascinating. I think I, I I think I saw last year you did it. You know, you did an Instagram live with like a lot of the cast. There's like twenty. You had twenty guys and girls on, and you had a few tech issues, but it was just so much fun watching that back with all the characters, and they're all happy. You you know, you're all happy to see each other. It's just it's just genuine, you know. Yeah, man, it's really cool. In fact, here's another thing that I did when I when I started Chapter Two in Red Dead Redemption Two, and I'm I'm in this camp. And I don't know what to do because <laughs> there's nobody you're holding your hand and dragging you along at that point. Yeah. I was in the camp and I thought, I'm just going to walk around and say hello to everybody. So I did. <laughs> and it was almost like I was saying hi to my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. It was that's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's a viral video waiting to happen, that one. <laughs> if that was recorded, far out. Um, some guy on the internet says, hello from Fort Campbell, Kentucky military installation. Love you guys. Right on, man. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. This is awesome. Hope you're doing well. 
Matthias says, Rob, love your work. I was wondering if you could comment more on John's daughter. I imagine she was born and died in the four years between games. Uh, I, man. All right. So thank you so much for hanging out. And thank you for the question. Um, I asked that same question myself to you because I knew, <laughs> I knew that when, uh, you know, John has this conversation with Bonnie McFarlane in Red Dead Redemption, where he talks about his daughter and she died and i it, it was years into red dead redemption 2 actually before i even put it together i thought well, yeah this is a prequel where's john's daughter and uh the answer i got she died <laughs> <laughs> all right that's all you want to tell me that's all i'm gonna know so i'm so sorry i can't elaborate really? on that wow. that's all i know yeah jiminator the original red dead is the game that introduced me to gaming. Your performance is nothing short of legendary, Rob. Outliving the true country life. Love from Jiminator. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say. And it's, I, I want to tell you that I never, um, I never knew how video games were made. And, and as I've always already said, I'm not much of a gamer. So I don't really know exactly what they look like. I mean, I see. At that point, I had seen my friends playing uh, GTA Vice City, and I thought it was cool because I thought, man, you can get in that car and drive around and go anywhere you want, and there's no time limit, mm. and you can, you know, wander around and check things out. And I was fascinated by it, but I didn't know. I, ne I guess I just never really thought about what it what it looks like to make that to be part of yeah. the production. So. Um, when I got there for my first day of shooting and they put me in this skin tight suit and they actually let me wear a, a gun holster and put a couple guns in there. Oh, and nice. <laughs> That's awesome. It makes you well, feel like the character. It makes you feel like you're a cowboy. Also your walk, you walk different in boots than you would in tennis shoes or sneakers, whatever, you know? So, um, it was, uh, to, to be part of it, everything was brand new to me. And I didn't know the story. I didn't know the whole story. I got it in bits and pieces and they weren't necessarily in order. So mm. I, I have to tell you that I really appreciate you saying that I, that I did a good job. Thank you. But I, I had to trust the director who had more information than I did. And if he said, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Then I thought, okay, all right. I, I guess so. I don't know. I have no way to know. So, um, I'm, I'm so glad people enjoyed it though. I mean, it worked out. Oh. I, it's great. So, so many, so many people are saying lovely things. Uh, if I, if I said them all, we'd be here for all, all day and night. Uh, Max oh. Richardson says, just wanted to say to Rob, thank you for helping create the greatest video game story of all time. <laughs> How do, does that ever get old hearing stuff like that? Oh no! I, I, <laughs> I love it. I I love it, and I'm so I'm so fortunate to be in a position to even say thank you. But we've got a hard kind of we've got a hard question for you here, all right? Did you right. have a favorite character in the game other than John? <laughs> oh man! Well, I, I got to tell you, the the side missions, a lot of those real charactery, funny people were yeah. hilarious and really really enjoyable to work with and just be around you know people that come in like uh the sun worshiper guy was so funny uh the guy who's looking for his friend gavin oh hilarious yeah, um, yeah. but then i would say that honestly one of my favorite as far as just enjoying being around the work like the the character and the person was seth in red dead redemption the grave digger seth Oh yeah. Oh, my oh yeah. One of, the, one of the funniest and one of the funniest characters too, you know. He's Oh yeah. I believe he pissed yourself or whatever he says, you know. <laughs> oh, he finds he finds this treasure. I'm not going to say I can't say it cuz it's a spoiler, but those of you who know when he does this, that that almost hit me in the face and it was the hardest <laughs> Thing to not die laughing right in the middle of that oh my god i couldn't hold it in i don't think oh my goodness oh. so many good times so much fun oh that's so good 
Um, Maxi, hi Rob. John is the best character ever. Love your work, man. Do you remember a scene that you couldn't stop laughing or was very funny while doing performance capture? There you go. That just ties into what we said. Greetings from Argentina, Maxi. Oh, Ma Maxi, thank you so much. Very kind of you. And um, I got a funny story about a scene. So bank yeah. robbery. Oh, yeah. Um really really intense Hosea it's yeah. a big moment for Hosea mm. uh, but so leading up to that we're shooting this thing everybody's real amped up and you know we know that in the, the stakes zone. are high yeah. and so um, I'm standing there thinking like how can I make myself look like I'm really ready to go just by my movements whatever whatever I was thinking but <laughs> so the line was uh we, we never should have met with with Bronte Dutch. I still can't say it out loud. So the first take we did, for whatever reason, I said, we never should have had a brunch with Dante. <laughs> but I don't know why I said it, but they didn't cut. They didn't cut what I said. They kept the scene going. Really? And then when it was over, everybody busted out laughing. Um, <laughs> There was also a guy that was filling in for the day for someone who normally played, and I can't even remember which character it was, but yeah, some somebody who had this role couldn't make it that day, so yep. they had another actor come in, and that actor kept calling Ben, whose character's name is Dutch. He kept calling him Butch, <laughs> and so i said when everybody was laughing of course at the end of the scene i thought what's what's so funny i had no idea that i said we never should have had brunch with dante and they said oh. we're not going to tell, tell you what you said but you know your line right I, said, I have one line and i said yeah of course i do so we do it again i said it again and this is like everybody again is so fired up and a lot going on we never should have had brunch with dante and this time ben was like i and he know he's he's very very respectful, well trained. Well, yeah. he's, he's had experience. He knows that he doesn't say cut. That's the that's the job of the director and the director only. But in this moment, he was like, I, I, I can't, I can't. And then immediately, all these, come on, Rogers over there saying, we needed mimosas though. We wanted uh. bloody Mary. <laughs> oh my goodness, this guy calling man. Dutch Butch, oh my goodness, that they, that was so funny. Do they have these behind the scenes somewhere? I mean, I would love to see some of this behind the scenes one day. They have to release it, don't you they, think? I mean, they have it somewhere. I mean, they have, oh, man. but I can't, I don't know. I don't know if that stuff will ever pop up no, anywhere or not. I don't think it will, but would you, would you like to see it pop up or do you prefer it to be just between you guys personally? Oh goodness! Well, I mean, anything anything that makes me look silly, I'm happy for anybody to see. I, but if anybody else wouldn't like it, uh, if it were making them or their character look silly, then of course I wouldn't want that to happen for for their sake, you know. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I think that we uh, we probably all would be able to laugh about it, knowing the people the way that I do. I think that um, of course everybody is very very serious about doing a good job and yeah oh yeah but we also know how to laugh at ourselves and i think that's that's one of the reasons why it's so easy for us to all get along because we all yeah. make fun of each other and make fun of ourselves and i think probably everybody would love to see a blooper reel too we'd all love it but oh you would have uh, heard that if you would have had that comment a few times i'm sure <laughs> i'm not the first person to ask um Eatable Cookie also says, um, could you give a shout out to my twins, Tom and Nick? Thank you, Rob. Tom and Nick. Is that right? Tom and Nick, yeah. Tom and Nick, you're twins. Well, I don't know how old your twins are, but we got something in common there. And uh, awesome. Enjoy it. And Tom and Nick, be good. Be good. Dad, go on it. <laughs> what's, it what's it like having twins, by the way? Is it a, was it a handful oh, yeah. at the start? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess here's the thing. My wife, neither my wife nor I had any kids prior to having twins. So we don't really have anything to compare it to. No. Um, but we, it was, 
it was exhausting, but it was also just really cool. We had a lot of support. We had a lot of family and, oh, that's and great. friends that were very interested and wanted so badly to participate and help us out. So that helped a lot. But um, you would, you know, when you have twins, you would do things like feeding them. You feed them both. You don't just feed one because yeah. you're crying. Think changing their diapers, change them both. Get them both as lined up as you can, and hopefully get on some kind of a routine. Yeah. Because because if you're not, there's no way you can step away and relax. You have to always watch a baby. You know. Well, that's it's what I was going to say. Like, d- did you try and line up their sleep patterns, or was it was that tough to do? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. I don't know. I think it, yeah. it, was, it was just kind of overwhelming to a point where you're yeah. so tired. And I think mm. this goes for anyone who has twins or uh, singleton, I guess, is what you call one baby at a time. Um, you just you just do it. You just do it. Um, and you're kind of on autopilot, maybe in a lot of ways. But a bit like a zombie. I, yeah. I, I, I'm so glad that we had twins. And I'm so glad that we felt like that this is what we wanted and this is what we got we didn't want twins but we wanted two kids yep we got them both right away and then and now you're uh, done. that's it that's it yeah so <laughs> people that have a one-year-old and a four-year-old and a seven-year-old they just never they haven't slept for seven years because they're <laughs> always in that i don't know how people do that i know you look at these people with six kids seven kids it's it's crazy i can't even think about it it's just <laughs> it must they just must be comfortable there like they forgot yeah, they must just like love to it. not be there and they're like this is this is what everybody experiences no it's not <laughs> so it's did not. you have them when you were shooting red dead one or was it after it was after it was okay. in between so the boys i think they were two when i started shooting red dead redemption two. Oh, so, okay Oh, right. We had Red Dead Redemption, and then immediately after that came out, we we did Undead Nightmare, which didn't take nearly as long as even Red Dead Redemption, which took no time at all compared to Red Dead Redemption 2. But um, it was between Undead Nightmare and Red Dead Redemption 2. These two little guys showed up. Oh, that's cool. Did you? Yeah, how long was Red Dead 1 compared to 2 in terms of how much uh, it worked? It, so the thing about it was it was spread out over i feel like it was spread out over the course of almost two years but Mm. the days that we worked we've worked far fewer days that the technology was different you're able to do so much more with the controller as you're playing the game you're able to do interact with so much more and explore Mm. so much more in two than you are in red dead redemption so the technology was different um which meant you didn't have to cover as many things. So shooting it all, they if you got the scene right, you got it right. And yeah. that was it. And in two, okay, you had to yeah, think, yeah. Arthur may walk in and walk back out. And as you're doing scenes that that may or may not ever even be seen by the player, mm. if you happen to walk over, you'll see a I scene know. start over there that you just never saw it that's a crazy thing it's different for everyone the playthrough yeah yeah but you also you always had to to be open like if arthur's coming this way or if he's coming from this you never know there was no Uh, way to know where whoever was playing the game or is playing the game is going to bring arthur in so of course they know that people are going to try to break the game they're going to try like I'm going to make this so it doesn't work. And I want to figure out how to do that. And so they were trying really hard to think, how is somebody going to break this and make it not work? we got to cover it all. And I think they did a really good job. They're one of the best at polishing games. Like when I played Red Dead 2, I think I had one bug or glitch the entire game, which is incredible for an open world game of that scale to only have like one bug is absolutely crazy. Really. (laughs) It's just a testament to them. But you you said that you didn't you haven't played the game. So have you seen like have you seen all your work? Have you have you actually watched every mission or like seen it or not? No, I don't think that I've seen it all. I saw wow. a lot of I saw a lot of it when uh, you know YouTube. Yeah, you that's what I mean. You've watched on YouTube, yeah. 
I've watched a lot of it. Yeah. And, and it's fun, but it's also for me, it's kind of weird too, because I think I, I remember that. I wish I had done that differently. I could make that sound a lot better if I <laughs> could. Cr- you critique so, yourself. <laughs> but I, I think, you know, for me, it was, um, I, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the work. And um, I know that I've always, for the rest of my life, got the option to play it or watch it if I want to. But what I really enjoy, the part that I like the most and what means the most to me was the actual work. So, uh, you know, it's uh, now here's the thing, too, you got to remember is that because I was traveling back and forth to New York for a two year span, I was in New York for three weeks, Mm -hmm. back in Indiana for two, back for three. So I was in New York more than I was in Indiana for two years straight. And uh, my wife basically became a single mother. Still supportive of what was going on, but it was a very, very different thing than what we had anticipated. So now that I'm back and I've been back and not been to New York, especially, you know, like for that kind of cycle for a Mm. long time now, but I I missed a lot of my kids growing up and um, I did, I wasn't here to help. So now I don't know that it would go over real well if I just continued to say, no, uh, I know that it's time to put him to bed, but I'm just going to play for 15 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) When you put it like that, man, you, uh, I can't argue with you actually. Yeah. I think that would go over real well. So, uh, uh, and it's fair. It would go over real well. So I, uh, uh, one day though, you know, yeah, whenever. Families, families are most important, man. Mr. Bombastic, thank you so much. Uh, Joshua, hi, Rob. It's Josh from Instagram. I've got a question as promised. Do you prefer playing the punk kid in Red Dead 2 or the badass, no-nonsense cowboy in Red Dead 1? Oh, man. (laughs) I I think... uh, How you doing, man, by the way, Josh? (laughs) Thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks for the question. Um, Oh, man. it's. I'll tell you what. I think I'm probably... It's easier. It's more natural for me to play the punk kid in Red Dead Two, <laughs> because because I have been that kid. My sister. I have a sister who's three years older than me, so she was a senior in high school when I was a freshman in high school, and it was cool because she had all these friends that were seniors, and as a freshman, I had all these friends that really weren't my friends. They were my sister's friends, but they were cool to me. Um, but, but I struggled just like John in the game where I thought, okay, you guys are all laughing at each other's jokes and that's cool. And now I'm going to crack one because you're going to laugh at mine too. And then they would look yeah. at me like, yeah, no, man. <laughs> yeah. And I would be fr- So I thought, yeah. Oh, man. so when I realized what they were kind of looking for, for Red Dead Redemption 2, I thought, yeah, I know exactly who that is. And so it wasn't so much of a stretch for me to try to become that guy because I have been that guy. But the badass in Red Dead Redemption, I don't think I've ever been that guy. <laughs> Every yeah. bit of that is imagining like, how how can I say this so it can sound as tough and as cool as whatever, you know? So hopefully I pulled it off. But yeah, that that was, uh, it was easier to be the punk for sure for me. All right, we've got a we've got a joke here from some guy on the internet. All right, let's see if it can make you laugh. What's it called when a chameleon can't camouflage? A reptile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I've I've kind of gone on a little bit of a. It's a slippery slope when you start telling jokes online and you get people laughing at them because then you feel all of a sudden like you should do it again. Yeah. And so I kind of got a little bit out of hand with dad jokes for a while. Oh, and... really? Yeah. I, I imagine you've got a few. <laughs> well, it's so funny. It's it's just so stupid. It's so stupid that it's so funny. And, and I really enjoy it. So thank you so much for your joke. And it actually is good. And I'm going to steal it. Just like I steal all my other jokes. So I'm a joke burglar. That one's mine now. Thank you. (laughs) 
Uh, Stella Carr. Hi from Canada. I love Red Dead 1 and 2 and Undead Nightmare. You did an amazing job. Thank you so much. This is so cool. There are people from all over the world. Oh, here. everywhere. Not just it's Australia. We're, we're global. Um, Shevchenko. Shevchenko. Um, about to snap trying to find Carolina Parakeet. Feels like I've been looking for years. Is that a quote? <laughs> That's a quote. I, I think so. I, I mean, I, I, I've I played both games for about 200 hours each, and even I don't remember everything. And I'm, I'm sure you don't be being, being in it, do you? It's just so tough to remember all the content oh, in the game. Yeah. Well, yeah, you you the the performance capture part of it, you have to memorize everything. And there's mm. so much of it that as soon as they say, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll select that for the scene, whatever. We like that cut. We got it. You have to just get it all out of your mind because then you have to learn yeah. so much more. So um, there, there have been things, even in just the first chapter when I played uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, where I thought, I don't remember that at all. And so, um it wasn't that long ago you know but uh yeah and then a lot of the stuff when you do eventually get into a sound booth to do the work that you do in there it's all kind of rapid fire so it does unless it's really funny to you it doesn't really stay either so yeah yeah so how much for red dead 2 how much voice acting did you do compared to performance capture like percentage wise you reckon 20 percent I, d I mean, I don't, I don't know the mm. correct answer to that because performance capture, you, uh, it's in, it's a longer process. You have to, you get yeah, them show okay. up, there, you got to change. Everybody's got to go through their process and get, um, you got to get into the system so that the cameras will see you and know what your movements are, and that that's kind of a process. I don't understand all the technical stuff, so I shouldn't try to explain it. But I'm just saying, <laughs> there's a process to make all of that. It's it's longer uh, to do than than the voice, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and then yeah, when you go into a into a sound booth, you're there only for four hours. They, they can't do it for longer than four hours because of SAG rules, I guess. Um, oh, is that why? I think right. so. Because yeah, every every one I've had on, they always do four hour sessions. I was wondering, is that just the standard in the industry? Yeah. I th yeah. And th the truth is, if you, even if you're not yelling, if you just it's... continuously speak for four hours, your voice kind of does at the end of it. Can't you think, oh, so I'm, I'm guessing that's probably why, but, um, it, but it may not have anything to do with SAG. It may just be that they're like, yeah, after four hours, nobody sounds like their character anymore because they're worn out. But um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. But there's there's a lot there too. It's just you know it would be things like um, if you're riding on horses and you're having a conversation with someone, you don't need performance capture for that because you'd just be sitting there looking at each other anyway. Um, mm -hmm. You just need the voices. So a lot of those conversations are are in a sound booth, um, or you know like the the sounds. <laughs> The grunts and the yeah, dying and all that sounds yeah. or whatever getting caught on fire, you're falling. All those you do those in a sound booth. Oh my goodness, man! I think uh, you must have seen the compilations of John like like dying in the game. Like they're so funny. <laughs> Hearing yourself must be it must be hilarious. Like you know what I mean? It's just that. So you need. Here's how they do it too. They say, uh, okay, we need different levels of grunts and so this time you're throwing a punch or you're landing on the ground and we need just level one we need 10 different versions and so you go Ugh. Ooh. and you try to give them they're like yeah that, like that that kind of level you know it'll get more intense you get louder and whatever but you so you do like three or four of them and then you realize that the first one sounds exactly like the third one and the fourth <laughs> You know, so yeah, you yeah. end up doing 50 different sounds to get 10 different ones. And mm. it's not hard. It's just a pro it's a process. And uh, some of that stuff, like puking stuff that you almost actually do puke because you're trying to make it sound <laughs> real. <laughs> so it's crazy. Or like 
falling off a cliff. I've never heard myself scream like that. Thank God. But it's it's alarming to like <laughs> hear it and think, ah. Anyway, oh, weird, man. Wild, weird stuff that you only experience, I guess, if you do this line of work. But... Hey, yeah, you wouldn't experience that in a TV or, or film, that's for sure. <laughs> um, Red Harlow, Rob, I won't have enough words to express how you and the rest of the crew have affected my life, but thank you for making a difference in game and in person. Love from the Duran family in Los Angeles. Oh, man. Thank you so much. You're going to make us cry. (laughs) Thank you so, so much. So glad you've enjoyed it. It's it's such a cool thing that so many people worked so hard on and enjoyed the work that they were doing, but poured so much love and uh, Mm. passion into. And and to have people say that they enjoyed it as much as you're telling me now and how it changed your life. I mean, that's really, really awesome. So glad to hear that. Thank you. Thank you so much, VJ. Um, Jim and Ada, what was it like filming the death scene Ooh, from the first game? Uh, well, okay. So the, I, I mentioned before that I was only given the script in, in sections and they weren't necessarily in order. So um, you have to remember too, that when you're, when you're doing a video game, the, the scenes that I did, all started like with the new, they called it a neutral pose. So um, I would, I would just have this kind of generic stance. As in like this or? No, just standing like what you would see John look like if you just stop walking and he's just standing there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you start like that, you do the scene. And then even if it's like for a gun battle or anything, it doesn't matter what is going to happen at the end of that scene. You have to end it back in that stance because I can't as an actor in this situation, pull out a gun and start shooting because if you're playing the game and that's not what you want to do, I just took that away from you. And so uh, you, you can't do that. And so you end in a neutral pose and uh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm remembering this so clearly, but I actually forget the question. <laughs> Please tell me again. The, um, the ending, the ending. Oh, the ending. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, of one, the, the, the death so scene. The point, yeah. the point I was trying to make was um, I didn't know. Truthfully, yeah. I longer story short, I didn't know that that's what it was. I did not know that that's what that meant. I knew that John would die throughout the game and then respawn. I so you thought it was another another one of those? Well, yeah, kind of. I mean, I'd yeah. never I had never done any performance capture of John dying, and I thought maybe I'm gonna do a bunch of these now. Like he gets shot, and this is how yeah. he dies when he gets shot, or he falls yeah, off. Yeah, no, cliff. I can understand that. Yeah. So um yeah, I mean looking back on it, I guess now, you know, and of course this is twelve years ago now or whatever it was, but um yeah, I should have known that it was a bigger, much bigger deal than I did at the time. And, but I just, I wasn't fully aware of what was going on. And, um, it would have been, it would have been very, very difficult. And I will tell you that, um, Sophia, who was Red Dead Redemption's Abigail, I'm going to say her last name wrong, so I'm not going to say it, but you can look her up. Um, Zarkozy. I I probably said it wrong. I don't know why I did that. I just said I wasn't going to do that. (laughs) So sorry. Um, She was fantastic in in that scene when she was crying. Awesome. And the way that she was looking, she she was really emotional and it made me emotional. And when when John says, all right, get, you know, and slaps that horse, I thought, thank God I don't have more lines because I'm about to start crying for real right now. And that wouldn't have worked. Man, that's crazy. Yes. But yeah, yeah. She knew what was going on, I think. She's, I didn't. So much, she's amazing. But, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. When did you When did you find out? So when did you actually realize that was, that was going to be it for him? You know what I mean? Like, was it was it a few weeks later? Was it after you shot the scene? Was it when you, the game came out? Like, when do you well, think that could be it? It I guess uh, well, I definitely knew it before the game was over. I knew yeah. that for sure. I don't know exactly when I yeah, knew. No. 
Um, but I, but I, I have to tell you too that. So now, when you're doing performance capture, the the technology has oh, advanced so much incredible. that you can see, you can wave at a screen almost like a movie screen on the stage, and you can see your character, your avatar, waving back at you. Yeah. At the time the majority maybe all of red dead redemption there was no you couldn't see an avatar you could see where the markers on the suit were and you could wave at the screen and see your little markers almost like wow you could put together like okay those are the balls those little those are me wave so i didn't i didn't even know what john marston looked like until the first trailer came out i had no idea yeah that's insane yeah, it is. Ins- it is insane, and it's. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. It didn't. Wouldn't have no, changed. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But, no. uh, as far as I guess, I'm just saying that so people are aware that it was. Um, I did. I didn't have the information that I think a lot of people thought think. Yeah. That I had, and uh, so I I appreciate all the kind words, but I can't. I genuinely can't take credit for a lot of these really awesome things that you're saying to me. So thank you. But I want to make it clear that that's that's it's the a way team it effort. It is a team effort. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So when you saw John for the first time, what was your reaction to that? Do you remember that? Yeah. I mean, I it, the whole thing, you know, the, this train and this countryside and this expand this huge world that they had created that you see in that first trailer that I saw, and I thought, wow. I knew that this was big, and I know that people are excited. But now looking at it, it looked like a movie. I mean, at oh. the time, you know, the, the oh, it still holds up, in my opinion. Yeah, well, I'm so glad you feel that way. It it really was overwhelming, and then I and I thought, no kidding, that's John. There he is. And then, but I still I couldn't like grab a hold of him and wave him around and make him like walk yeah, with yeah. me. And so I just it was still kind of foreign uh, because I couldn't. I could only still just see dots where I was, you know, in the moment, but. It's just oh, wild, man. man. Really uh, cool, and and to see other characters too, you know, to see what they looked like in the game versus what they look like in real life. That was really cool too. Or I thought, my goodness, this is it's just a wild, dude, wild experience. All my jaw is you know? starting to hurt from smiling. By the way, <laughs> and laughing. Um, Rory, Rory says, "Hey, Rob, you're the best." What? What about me, Rory? Come on. No. Uh, hey, hey, Rob, you're the best. Arthur couldn't tie your shoes. I've never been the same since you got shot to pieces outside the barn. Love from Scotland. Me either, Rory. Me either. Oh, Rory. Thank you so much. For kind words, man. I, I'm so glad that you enjoyed the series, Red Dead Redemption. The series. It's um. It's a wild deal. I guess if you, you know, if you played Red Dead Redemption before you played Red Dead Redemption 2, you you might have like a, I, I really like John Marston. If you played Red Dead Redemption 2 before you played Red Dead Redemption, you love Arthur Morgan. You know that. And you might also, even if you were a John Marston guy, say, I love Arthur Morgan. <laughs> He's awesome. And, and, and I love it that that is the way it is. Roger is one of the, one of the coolest people as you all already know and yeah. such a talented person to he did have to change his voice and his accent yeah he did yeah and he pulled it off and i that in itself is just such an overwhelming task i mean it's yeah it's an enormous task it, to it try creates to be- more of a toll doesn't it on like when you have to put on a voice i would have thought yeah yeah, I'm, I don't think I could do it. And, and yeah. you know, it's really, really great. I, I Thank you, Rory, for your for your compliments. And uh, thanks for hanging out. Got another one here, Zane. Rob, love your performances, John, in both Red Dead games. How did it feel to come back as John in Red Dead 2? So how what was that when you got that call? What was that like? You're coming back. Well uh when i when i was initially contacted i was i was called by uh our director who of course i knew and uh had been in touch with after undead nightmare but you know just here and there he's a busy busy guy i don't want to bother him but we did interact over email a few times anyway this time he called me 
and said, are you interested in doing some more work? And I said, yeah, I would love to. Um, the only problem is a couple of problems. One, I don't live in LA anymore. I live in Indiana now. <laughs> and so I don't know where you're planning on doing this work, but either, either location, New York or LA, I don't live either place. So yeah. I don't know how I would get there. Also, I have a job and a family now that doesn't work. When I did Red Dead Redemption, I was a bartender. Wow. So I could just leave, you know, that was a whole different deal. But, um, he said, well, we don't know for sure what we're looking at. So I just wanted to get an idea of whether you had any interest at all or not. And I said, yeah, but really what I thought in that moment was that it was going to be uh, a game that had nothing to do with Red Dead Redemption, maybe another Grand Theft Auto. Oh, okay. I was going to come in and just do a character that sounds nothing like John and just another one more time to hang out and do some more work, which they actually did in undead nightmare with one of the gta past playable characters I came too. yeah yeah came in and played this really crazy character and they all had fun and it was just kind of a nice little thing it's like a cameo but, thing yeah 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 and i thought that's probably what it was because i knew i knew what happened to my character at that point i thought what how's that work and and anyway um Yes. Loved it. Loved going back. Loved hanging out with all the people from Rockstar. Loved the whole experience. Loved getting to meet new people. Roger, um, the rest of the cast, the gang that oh, had yeah. become such great friends with them. Um, John, though, it was different because mm. as we know, John, the John that I knew and experienced was an established person. He was he, he had knowledge and experience and had a purpose, had a sense of purpose in his life. He wanted to have his family, protect his family, and, and just do that. That's what he wanted. Mm. Now we were going to this character is kind of a totally different character because. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know, John, he was so established by the time I started working at Red Dead Redemption with that character. I didn't know what he was really like before. I mean, I knew that he grew up in a broken situation. I mean, he was in an orphanage, ran away, got fell in with this gang. That can't be the most stable environment, however that looks. Um, but I thought this is different. This is very different. And and I got to find a way and understand through what they're telling me how someone that's that tough and determined what what was that person like before that and how did that person get from where they are to what they what we already know and so um it was it was great and what a great character i mean for those of you who played red dead redemption before red dead redemption 2 how cool is that oh, to it's know so cool. why john is john it's so cool i mean yeah i've got a lot, lot of people here are saying you know we grew up with your with the character you know even even me when the first game came was it 2008 or 2010 when the first game I 2010 think 2010 yeah so i would have been yeah 14 15 you know it's just it's unbelievable to look back and it must have been a thrill to to come back to the second um shevchenko says much love from boston when are you going to pop up in a Okay, I don't know what that question is. We'll we'll leave that one. Uh, <laughs> I've got to be careful here. What I, I got to be careful here because it's live. Crank Mambo, hey Rob, much love in both Red Deads. Is there any chance you could give a give a shout out to Ches at Rapid Rodent Racing? Thanks for your time. Yeah, right on, man. Well, Ches at Rapid Rodent Racing. <laughs> I hope you're doing well, man. Kick some ass. Are you, I wonder if, are they racing? Yeah, I what's rapid rodent racing? Is that rodents racing around a track or what? I don't know, but I definitely want to know more. We got yeah. to figure this out. This is gotta... uh, rapid rodent racing. I love it. Rapid Give them hell. rodent racing. I'm looking this up live because <laughs> I need to know what this is. Rapid oh rodent goodness. racing, far out. Um, okay, I think it's just a... Uh, just old, old, um, 
modification on cars. There you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, Joshua. Hi, hi, Rob. Josh again. Spoilers. What was it like filming the epilogue, building the house, the part where you, um, the cover art and marrying Abigail from Red Dead 1 from Josh? Josh, thank you again so much, man. Uh, awesome. It was awesome. They, there was so much more of the house building stuff to do. And I, of course, I don't know exactly what all you have to do to complete that um, now, but they had, you basically did every part of building that house. Every part of the, the silo, the barn, you did it all. And we captured it all. And then they have testers, people that play the game and and give comments feedback on what works what doesn't what's fun what's oh, not oh yeah they've got a lot of testing and, yeah yeah and uh a lot of that a lot of that house building and all that building stuff they just said yeah it's just way too much it's boring <laughs> i mean it's fun you know to do some of it but they had so much that that people were like i, I don't want to do this anymore this is not really this is not wow. what i wanted to do. so um that but so that aspect of it it was really cool and uh, to be able to shoot all that stuff and have oh, an yeah. idea, you know, like I know exactly what this looks like because I do this work. I'll be doing this work next week when I go back home. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it was it was fun as far as that goes. Um, but Callie Moore, who is Red Dead Redemption 2's um, Abigail Marston is Amazing. awesome. Yeah. So cool. So talented. So much fun. Um, we really, really enjoyed doing all this stuff. One thing I do want to say this, and I don't know that I've ever said this, but there was a scene, the scene, I guess, where John is, and of course, Abigail, the entire time, the epilogue is saying, no, we're done. We're done. You're done. You don't live that life anymore. We're walking away from that. Well, so at a certain point, John says, I'm doing this. This is what I do. It's yelling. It's really mad. Like get shoves her a little bit. You know who I am. You know what I do. That scene. We didn't get that in the first take. We didn't get that in the second or third or fourth, probably either. And the whole time, poor Callie is, and she, it's an emotional scene and it was emotional for me too, but I didn't, I didn't have to cry. She was crying for like an hour. Wow trying to get that done and then i've got to go in and yell at her again <laughs> oh, wow it's kind of it's like oh my goodness that's horrible i hated it but if it worked and everybody's good i'm sure callie's fine but um that was that was tough tough oh, to wow. be that rough on her and and have her go through that but we got to get engaged we got to get married uh that of course was fun and awesome and and all the fun stuff in between of course you got all the missions with sadie and all the stuff with charles just oh, awesome yeah. so much fun have Uncle. you talked have you talked to her about that 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 moment like after the fact i think i think probably right away we did like yeah whew, that's over you know but um no i i i haven't and um mm. it's callie is uh she she's done some more work as an actress since um actually won some awards as an actress since red dead redemption 2 and i can't tell you exactly what the name of the show was but she got real busy and uh i i think that she's still busy she and her husband um her husband is a photographer and he's all over the world doing work so i think that she travels a lot with him and oh, wow. she's yeah i think she's just i think she's been busy and, She's and killing as far it. As I know, yeah yeah they're really they're really doing well he's a great guy they're really cool people like like the rest of the i'm telling you I, it's just it's so <laughs> easy to uh, hang out with all these people so yeah it's amazing cryptic i love i love red dead series love your work it's so great rob can you just say hi to aiden thank you what's happening aiden Aiden, I hope you're doing well. It's uh, what is it? Is it Saturday? I don't know where in the world you are, so I can't. Well, it's really say Sunday that. morning here in Australia. We're oh ahead of the. We're ahead of you guys. 
Well, the future's looking it, bright. <laughs> well, I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you every morning now and be like, "How's my work day gonna go? Is it good? <laughs> Everything cool? All right." <laughs> Aiden, enjoy your day or night or whatever time it is. Thanks for hanging out. Um, who cares? Hey, Rob. Much love from Romania. What do you think the deal is? Deal is with the strange man. This is something I want to know too. What are your thoughts on the strange man, Rob? Oh my goodness! Well, thank you so much, and and I can't remember your username from Romania. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> the, no, that's the username. I'm not being. Yeah, I'm not being. <laughs> I'm not being an asshole. <laughs> His username is who cares? Yeah, far out. That is so great. Uh, so the uh, strange man. Oh my goodness! Well, so. You shoot the strange man, the strange man doesn't die. The strange man keeps showing up, knowing things that nobody else that you're not acquainted with would know. You, it's a, uh, I don't know. And, and mm. one, I have been asked this question before. And so I, I don't remember exactly what I said the first time I answered it, but I have <laughs> thought about it since. And I know that a lot of people think that it's either God or the devil. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I, I would say that if, if, if I had to imagine what God creepy, I don't think. And, uh, uh, oh, am I still here? My you're here. You're here. It's all bad. good. You just cut out for a second. Okay. You're all good. Okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, my, my imagination of what God is would not be creepy. So I guess would say that if you really want to know my personal opinion, it must be the devil. I don't. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Okay. Yeah. I I didn't I didn't think that was the case, but my, yeah, I have heard that theory. I have heard that theory a lot. Ryan, hi Rob, massive fan. I mean, everyone's starting this with massive fan. By the way, <laughs> every question is massive fan. I mean, John and Arthur are my favorite characters ever. Quick question: thoughts on the man in black? Ryan, thank you so much, man. Very kind of you. Um, that's the same guy, right? It's man the same black guy. And a strange it's, man, I think. it's the same guy, yeah. Uh, Nathan, hi from Russia. Locke, ain't no trouble, Abigail. Ain't no trouble. How close were you with Abigail and Jack's actor by the end of Red Dead 2, Rob? I think oh you're goodness. close with the whole cast. Well, so yeah. thank you for thank you so much. Yeah, well, so, um, so ain't no trouble, ain't no trouble, Abigail. I think that's from Red Dead Redemption, right? That's when Abigail takes off, and that's pretty much the last thing you hear John say, I think. Um, but so the new with Callie, and there were a, a few different people who played Jack, and the reason is because Jack was growing up. So, to make sense of the timeline, you know, kids grow fast and, and, they had several different jacks and uh they, oh, course, they were yeah. all they were all great all of them were great and teddy i should not try to say people's names because i can't remember them. <laughs> but Ted, teddy teddy was the oldest uh, of the jacks and he turned 18 at some point during production so oh when you're 18 or, or i guess younger than 18 excuse me, um, you have to be accompanied by a parent or a guardian of some sort. So Teddy was really cool. And Teddy's mom was always there for, for the first half of, of the work we did, whatever. She was really cool. Um, and it was fun to, you know, get to know him because we played this, we had this dynamic when our, with our characters. And um, then Teddy became 18 and his mom kept, or quit coming. And so everybody kind of missed his mom but then teddy <laughs> was able to be like i'm here on my own i'm a man now and, and <laughs> yeah. was really cool and that's awesome uh, yeah man it was great they were all great everybody was great um Locke says what did you think jack went on and did after killing edgar ross as an adult i think i think that jack wrote a book 
I think he wrote a book. I think that you find it in GTA, don't you? Oh, yeah. I think it's an Easter egg. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Yeah. I love how I they do that, that that shit, man. I love that. It's all connected, too. Oh, man. I, I hope you it. pop up in the next GTA, by the way, as a cameo. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I hope so, too. Oh. Put the word out. I, I, I they have to do it. To let somebody know. They have Thank to you. do it. Please. Um, who cares again? He says, hi, Rob. Um, you think uncle is red Harlow. Do you think the uncle is red Harlow? I get this question a lot, actually. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, we, I think we need to know more about that. Don't we? Um, mm. I don't know that I know that, um, at a camp fire, I think in red dead redemption, if you sit down with a couple characters the npcs you hear them talking about red harlow so even though red harlow isn't part of red dead redemption he is mentioned i mean it's it's red dead revolver is not red dead redemption one or two it's got a different title there's a whole lot of reasons behind that i guess but it, it could very well be that uncle is red harlow i think it like time wise it would make sense but i and there's just the thing about <laughs> just such a character that you just you're kind of like maybe because you would not put that together maybe that's just in fact that is what it is that he is red harlow and that's they did such a good job of making you never know it did did playing this game i wanted to ask you did playing this game make you go back and watch like western films at all or like get ingrained in that or not really no no it really didn't no um and I didn't, you know, I think that, um, like I said before, I didn't, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I didn't, I really didn't. And, and I want to say too, as far as, <laughs> as acting goes, as just as far as acting goes, I did, I had some luck with doing commercials yep. um, before Red Dead Redemption. And I had a couple teeny tiny little parts in movies that mm -hmm. I, I didn't book those movies. I was in them given these little one or two line parts in these movies because I knew the director or I knew the director's assistant. And like, sometimes okay. that's how things work in Hollywood. Yeah. They don't audition for every role. They just find someone to play yeah. this really one day character, you know, not a big deal. Um, so I don't have, I didn't have a whole lot of experience with what it's like to be a character for any extended amount of time. So, um, I learned on the fly, I guess, really, kind of with all this stuff. That's what's so amazing, man, how you can knock it out of the park. And it's it's your first and only video game, yeah, these two games? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Thank that's you. just insane to me, how you haven't <laughs> got, like, surely you've been asked to be in other games, no? Um, I don't. I I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, there was after Red Dead Redemption, there was, uh, or maybe after Undead Nightmare or whatever, there was someone who reached out to me through my then agent. Yeah. Who had a, a, tr a trilogy of horror films and said, you'll be in each one of them. Uh, you'll be either this character, this one, or this one, and read the scripts and let me know what you think. And I never even read the scripts because I thought, I really appreciate it, but I'm I'm not. I live in Indiana now. I've got two brand new babies. That's at what the time. I was gonna say. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if my agent just said, "Yeah, he's actually really done," and I stopped getting calls, or if I just didn't get calls. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but since Red Dead Two, it's not like people are knocking down my door trying to hire me for jobs. That's just the truth. I'm not looking for them. No, but um, no. And it's okay. I, I'm okay with that. If something did happen, I may or may not want to do it, depending on what it is. But um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. That's just, with it. I just feel like that's crazy. That's like insane to my to me. Anyway, that's that's just me, <laughs> I guess. Um, no, like like I know I know you want to be you know you be a family man and all that, but it's just it's weird that you, the people aren't knocking down your door. I don't know. Maybe that's just. Me. Well, thank you for saying that. <laughs> Uh, uh, Stella, Stella Carr. I convinced my mum to play Red Dead Two. I think Ben, Ben's mum played Red Dead. By the way, uh, yes. 
My question is, do you think you'd be friends with John in real life? I would I be friends with John? Yeah. I th- I think that I'm friends with several Johns in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to say, uh, thank you so much for the question. That is a great, great question. I mean, all of the uh, shoot 'em up stuff aside, I know a lot of people that are actually John Marston. I think that just have that, that attitude and that, uh, you know, like the, I'm confused and I don't know how to handle it. So I'm just going to get real loud and aggressive. And like, yeah, I know a lot of those guys. I'm not necessarily friends with a lot of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know you know a lot of them do we all do uh, but yeah i don't i don't know i mean i guess w- one thing that i'd say for sure uh, john is a dedicated man good husband has- yeah good father and yeah so i respect that i respect that there's literally nothing that is going to take him away from that at this point not a thing once he's done doing what he has to do. So um, I do respect that, but I don't think I would want to hang out with him and have him over for dinner all the time and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, Notorious Curtis, I wanted to know, Red Dead 1, John, has a deeper voice in that game, he feels, whereas 2 is a bit, a bit more high-pitched. Was that on purpose or coincidence? Uh notorious Curtis thank you for for the question thanks for hanging out um I don't I don't know I don't know that I I don't know that I did that whether I did it um I don't I didn't try to do that oh you I reckon didn't. they did a filter they something. I think that they do filters for everyone um and I, I think that's just part of the process anyway but I don't again I don't know the technology of it but it's no. possible that they that they tweaked it a little bit. Um, but I don't know. Nobody told me. But you didn't, you didn't do anything on purpose. No, no, nobody ever said for me to try to either. It just, it's, it's that way because it's that way, I guess. Yeah. Uh, D Y I. Did you feel pity in red dead two for John and his family, knowing the inevitable fate he would suffer? And did you find it sad that Jack couldn't escape the life? DYI, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's tragic, but that I think that also you need that for mm. a good story. You need tragedy, um, and all good stories have some. You know, I guess not all of them, but you you need. Um, in this case, for sure, I think it makes the story so much better than just happily ever after there they are and they'll just fade to black slowly that's just kind of whatever but like yeah wouldn't have the impact on you that you have with the ending that they actually use but yeah i think um yes and no i mean I, red dead redemption 2 was very much like red dead redemption in the fact that we didn't get the entire script all at once we had to throughout the process try to share information with each other to try and understand what was actually happening in this game and this Mm. story. Um, There would be things where, you know, we would do a scene and the animators or the director, maybe some, somebody would say, Hey, just know that it's really cold. You're way up in the mountains and it's freezing cold. So just keep that in the the back of your head. And, you know, Mm. you're in this room that doesn't have anything. It's, you're not on a movie set where you're actually in the mountains where it's cold. You got to go like this, dude, just sort of pretend. (laughs) And so a a lot of us, myself included, got hung up on that for way too long. Okay, I think I know what's going on here. By the way, is it cold? They would say, no, it's not cold. Quit. We'll tell you if you need to know. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, uh, I want to make sure I have all the information that you want me to have. And you yeah. didn't mention me whether it's cold or not. So I'm going to ask it. <laughs> we, all, we all had so much fun. But we, I, I, maybe more, some people had more idea of what was going on than I did. But a lot of trust involved. A lot of trust. That, that rodent racing that we talked about earlier. Um, yeah. Holds the world record for the fastest time in a Volkswagen camper van on the track Santa Pod Raceway. There you go. <laughs> That's so awesome. Congratulations. 
that fantastic. I, I want to say something. This is kind of uh, some useless information about me, but I actually have, well, I don't have it anymore, but I did at one time have a world record of my own. Did you? Not something that you want to have, but I did. And I'm going to show you this. It's going to blow your mind unless you've seen it already. But no, see I my haven't. hand? See, this is my left hand on my ring finger. And that's my finger. I can't straighten it. It's got this crazy knuckle that's kind of like I, so when i was a baby i was 17 months old and my sister was riding an exercise bike my mom she left the room for 20 seconds i was on my little horse you know those little horses with yeah, strings on yeah. i climbed off that and i crawled over walked over and i grabbed the chain on this exercise bike oh and it cut my finger all the way off and thank God they got me to a hospital and they stuck it back on. No way. I mean, the it grew, but I had so many procedures on my hand oh and my on my wrist. Oh, my God. They took, ner- I guess they took nerves out of my... Okay, long story short, at the time, I was considered the youngest successful replant in the world. <laughs> and then someone wow. younger... Someone younger cut something off and outdid me, whatever. Oh, stuff them. You're the OG. You're the original. I'm the, uh, yeah, I was for a moment in time. The Can hero, you show uh, me that one more time, please? Yeah. Oh, my this, God. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. I know. That's insane. Well, the thing is, like, my entire life, it's been this way. I mean, as far as I remember, I was such a little guy. My finger wasn't very long when it happened. But as it grew, the scar tissue on the inside here, I don't want to gross people out. His name is Sloth. If you if you've seen Goonies, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Made my finger Sloth after Sloth. <laughs> but I've got nice. this rubber, nice. this rubber ring because I can get it on. I actually have my wife's. Oh. I call her Mama. But I got Mama tattooed on my finger oh, in case that's I awesome. Don't wear my ring. I still got my wedding. Yeah, it's crazy. Man, right? that is it's awesome. Crazy. No, great, great. I'm glad you shared that. I didn't know. I did not know that. That's awesome. Well, yeah. Useless. Useless No, that's not useless at all. <laughs> um, Notorious Curtis, Rob, what do you think law-wise, why do you think law-wise, John never mentioned Arthur? Obviously, Rockstar hadn't come up with the Arthur character at that point. Is that the reason? Well, I'm guessing so, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I, I would, that's a tough one. I would just say, but I don't know. Thank you for the question. That's really a, he doesn't he doesn't talk about Arthur really at the end of Red Dead Redemption two either. In fact, he point he mentions I yeah I don't talk about him much, but I I think about him. So mm. um, yeah, I don't maybe they're they're making it so they either knew or they didn't know. I don't know, but the fact that he wasn't mentioned in Red Dead Redemption, I think they covered that either way. Yeah, with that line, I, I, it's too, too, it's too hard for me to talk about it. Right? So I gotta, I gotta ask you as well. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. Red Dead Three. Do you think it would? Ha- do you think it will happen? And would you come back? No. Like, now that I know what what you've said earlier, um, you know that's a tough situation, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Would be, uh, well, yeah. I mean, okay. So let me say this one. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a Red Dead Redemption 3, but I do know, and this is not my knowledge, this is not me sharing news that everyone doesn't have access to. This is common knowledge that they said that Red Dead Redemption was going to become a franchise. Whether they're still on that idea of, of going forward, I don't yeah. know. But that's that's not news. I'm not giving no, you anything. No, 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 no. We don't want articles coming out of this <laughs> saying, you yeah, know. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, yeah. Rob confirms so, Red Dead 3. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. But but so I don't know. I don't know if they will or not. I hope they do. But yeah. I also don't know that even if they do, if I will be part of it. Yeah. If they ask me, of course I will. You will, yeah. And if they don't then I, I've, I'm i sure that it will be a really, really cool, great game, just like the other two, three, if you count Red Dead Revolver. Um, yeah. But I, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, if they ask me, 
And if it were, I, I guess the other aspect of it, if, if it were only up to me in a second. Yeah. But yep. um, probably what we would do if, mm. if it were like, you're going to do this and it's going to take four or five years, we would go move to wherever it's being yeah, shot. I was so gonna we can say, all yeah. be, because I, I, that's, that's a lot. It's a lot on all of us. We're a family, you know, it doesn't, mm. doesn't make sense. It doesn't work for us to, to be that separated. So we'd figure Great. it out though. And what about undead nightmare? Do you think they'll do that for this game or, cause I get that question. A lot of people are <laughs> desperate for undead nightmare again, you know? Yeah. Um, Oh boy, I hope I hope that they would, but yeah. or it was it was called a DLC. Now it's kind of just called an update. Am I, yeah. Did I? No, no, I gotcha. All good. Um. Okay, good. Uh. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know what that would look like. Um, yeah. I but know. it was fun. I think a lot of people really enjoyed it. It was great. Oh, it must have been fun um, shooting that. Love your work, Rob. Uh, did they model John's face after you, do you think? That's from Uncool Ghoul. <laughs> Uncool Ghoul. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't, I don't think they did. Um, I don't, I know that, okay, so for Red Dead Redemption 2, they had different technology and they did facial head, that like whole head scans where they could if they want to make the character look identical to you because they had oh, yeah. that they had that model in their computer um but john's look his avatar was already established in red dead redemption and i don't know if it was already established before i was cast or not so um it's it's possible that they thought okay this Kind of looks like this guy. I don't know that it mattered to him though. I don't know that it was, and I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I. Mm. I don't think that I ever asked, because I don't think that John looks anything like me. Just like anybody who says, like, if you're some, some one of your friends says, you look just like that guy, and you think, no, I, no, I don't. Yeah, I know. I know so, exactly what you mean. Yeah. It's kind of like that, and I don't. I really don't think that John and I look alike they they may have made him look a little bit more like me in red dead redemption too but i can't even say for sure that that's what they did uh, yeah i don't think you look that alike personally um yeah. aaron says thank you for your amazing work on both red dead redemptions rob um your work is legendary rock on rip van winkle jim milton <laughs> John, <laughs> jim milton i hear this one a lot what are your thoughts on Jim Milton? <laughs> oh, thank, thank you so, so much for your kind words. And I'm so sorry that I forgot your name. You're using Aaron, name. Aaron. Aaron, I had it. And then I started hearing all the names that you listed off and it threw me off. But thank you, Aaron. Um, yeah, jeez, John, Jim. That, that, by the way, was another funny scene where oh. John was talking to uh, Mr. Geddes and he forgot for a split second that he told everybody that his name was Jim. And he said, yeah, John, Jim, Milton. And then at the end of the scene, Gary says, all right, nice to meet you, John, Jim. And it was, <laughs> yeah. it was just so funny. I thought we didn't rehearse that or anything. He just did it. He That's did so it good. that well. And I think they took that. Oh, my goodness. That's but, so yeah, good. Jim Milton, Rip Van Winkle. I love it. All that. All that. So fun. <laughs> uh, GM, it's great that you're the sort of guy who's laughing all the time. You gotta laugh. If you don't, my motto is: if you don't laugh, you cry. <laughs> no doubt. There's no doubt about it. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, life is short. I don't. I don't want to get into like some real deep thing, but the truth is, life is short. And I'm 44. And yesterday I was 18. And uh, as far as we know, we only get one chance. So you got a choice. It's your life. You write the story. Either have fun and enjoy it, or don't. It's up to you. I try to have fun and enjoy it. I love it. Uh, Omega say, um, did the amazing performance of Roger playing Arthur surprise you at all? Absolutely love your work, Rob. 
Uh, thank you so much. And and I will tell you, no, I did not. And but I I guess I didn't know Ro I didn't know Roger and I didn't know any of his work until I worked with him the very first day that we worked together. Um but so I can't say that it's it surprised me that he pulled it off, but I can say that I know the very first day that I got back to my hotel room from that first day working, I called my wife and I said, This, this is awesome you should see this guy who is the playable character he knows exactly what he's doing this is gonna be awesome i was so excited about it yeah because i just the the, the arthur made it look or <laughs> arthur roger <laughs> made it look like he had done this for 20 years and i know he, he was so comfortable and so confident and because he's worked at it he's educated he's and he's serious and dedicated and that's what it takes. But uh, yeah, I, I was from day one with Roger. I thought this is going to be something. This is, this is awesome. So that's how I always felt about Roger's, his work. Amazing stuff. I, I had him on as well. It was a real treat to talk to him. And I also had Ben on. What was your relationship like Ben on Ben with over the years? Dutch for anyone um benjamin davis what was that like oh my goodness well so ben ben and i have known each other this is one of those weird like doesn't it doesn't sound like it's true but it is true ben and i worked at the same bar as um he was a he was a door host and i was a bar back and then at certain certain times i would be a door host as well so ben and i worked together and knew each other probably eight years before Red Dead Redemption was shot. Crazy. So, yeah, I've, you know, we we both are walking in the same day and saying, hey, man, what's going on? How are you? <laughs> and we both keep walking together. And we go to the same place. We're like, are you working here? Are you working on this? <laughs> yeah, are you? Yeah. And so <laughs> it just was like, what? And there's, a, you know, so, so many people in L.A. trying to do this stuff. And the fact that we knew each other and had – like didn't just weren't acquaintances we knew each other so then to be able to experience all the work over the years and and that hanging out you know he was he was in from out of town when we were in new york too so we stayed in the same hotel a lot of the time we would go to dinner a lot and uh yeah yeah ben ben is awesome and i know that you spoke with him and you can tell you you just you you love him he's he is oh yeah oh he's got he's a very very well educated man and mm. uh he can he can make you understand things he's not only is he well educated but he's he's really good at explaining things mm. and uh you know in a language that i understand <laughs> <laughs> you're being man. too humble come on <laughs> come on but ben i mean he could be a lot of things he's a great great talented actor and he's passionate about it but he can also be a lot of other things and be really good at that too he's a very smart person oh yeah i i don't think if they do another game i don't think it's it, it's got to have you guys in it like to have that yeah red dead essence you know you guys have to be in it i feel like otherwise it wouldn't feel the same that's just me you know i think well, well yeah um i hope, hope that happens thank yeah. you nico l did the cast get anything to commemorate their time on the project like tattoos like lord of the rings cast got tattoos at the end of filming <laughs> Uh, so Nicole, yes, thank you for the question. And we we did talk about that for a long time. And uh, tattoos is what we were going to get. And I've got a bunch of tattoos, and I've had tattoos for a long time. Um, but not everybody that I worked with does have tattoos, and it's a commitment that not everybody was really. They would mm -hmm. do it, and and everyone said, "Okay, I will do it." We just have to agree on what it is that we're all going to get. And it was kind of a everybody wanted to have the same exact thing so that it would be what it is and mean what it means but we couldn't all agree on what it was that we were oh, gonna get. really so, yeah no so 
we were going to have shirts made. We were going to, but I think more than anything, we just, we're still in, in touch so frequently that it's like, it could happen, but we don't really need it. We're just a friendship, you know? So you don't have to remind yourself that you're friends with someone that you're friends with. So we, no, I mean, we haven't. And that's, I guess those are the reasons why. Yeah. Do you have any red dead tattoos yourself? I don't, I don't, I've wanted to, I just don't know if that's, yeah, I don't know if, so where I live, yeah, people like if there's a concert and I know that there hasn't been a concert anywhere for a long time, but there used to be concerts where people would play in bands and a lot of people would go, what are those things? I don't remember. (laughs) Back when I was a kid. So, (laughs) but, so if you wear like let's say that you're going to uh maybe you know the band uh, metallica oh, i don't know, I know the band, band metallica you know. yeah. so if you go to a metallica concert you're not supposed to wear a metallica t-shirt to the concert you're supposed to wear anything but that if you wear the, t- the t-shirt of the concert that you're going to for whatever reason i don't even know if i agree with it people that are around me think no no you know you can't do that oh you really do- yeah, which it really doesn't make any sense, but that is kind of the thing. And because maybe because I've I've known like okay, if I go to see this band, I definitely can't wear that shirt if I have that shirt. So I think that I maybe don't want to get a Red Dead Redemption tattoo because of that. In whatever really, way that, yeah. Do deep down, do you want one, or I, it? It's not a fa- I mean, It's not going to phase you. I guess if I had one, people are going to make fun. I want to tell you something. Here's another thing. Life lesson, everybody. Doesn't matter who you are or what you do. People are going to make fun of you and try to find a way. And, and a lot of it's just for fun, whatever. But uh, that's just the way That's the way life is for everyone. So if that's how things are for you now, I'm sorry. But they're going to be like that forever because they are for everyone. So do what you want to do. And don't worry about people making fun of you for what you do. But I think, I think for me, I might feel myself like a tattoo of Red Dead Redemption or of John Marston or something like that. I think that maybe it would be like a, I'm, I'm trying to, I would be afraid that people would think I'm trying to let you know who I am because I want you to know. Okay. Somehow. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And I, don't, I definitely don't want to do that. If people know who I am, great. And you don't want to gloat point. about it. No. Yeah. So that that's part of it too, I guess. But um, yeah. yeah, but if I want if I want something else and I get it, people make fun of me. That's that's their choice. Not my choice is to do what I want to do and enjoy it. Are we Hopefully are we all right for another 15, 20 minutes, Rob? I know you've been yep. very generous with your time. Well, this has been really a lot of fun. Thank you so much. No worries, man. Um, Lord Amadeus Yeats says, Hey, just tuning in. Looking forward to whatever this is, but I'm glad John is here. (laughs) You mean Rob is here? Yeah. Uh, Lord Amadeus Yeats. Thank you so much. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're checking it out, man. You're going to have to go back and watch all, all the stuff leading up to this because it's been so educational. I don't want you to miss any of it. <laughs> no, exactly. Notorious, did you work on undead nightmare scenes and dialogue for Red Dead 1 during the making of the main game or did you get called in later? Later. later. It was later and um, I... I it was kind of uh it was put together quickly because it, they wanted to have it done in time for Halloween. And mm. I think that it was, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know how long it took, but you, yeah. uh, to do a video game, there's a lot of stuff that they have to do after the fact to make it all work. And uh, I think that takes time shooting. It takes time, but then the technical aspects of it, which are so much of it, I think that takes, that takes time. So they, they, uh, they did it after, but it was pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, was, Rob, I hope I hope you're having a great weekend. If Red Dead 3 were to happen and Rockstar did a storyline with a younger John, like when John left the gang for about a year before the events of Red Dead 2, would that interest you from RC? I think as we said earlier, 
Red Dead Three in general interests Rob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. It absolutely does. I will say this too, though, and I want I want people to know this. This is the truth. If if Rockstar were to call me and say we have a role for you that is not in Red Dead, you're not going to be John Marston. In fact, you need to be very different if you can pull it off. We have a role, big or small, totally different story. I would, I would do it. I would love to do it. I love the work. I love the people. It's not for me. It's not just. It wouldn't have to necessarily be a John Marston or a Red Dead Redemption thing. It would be back at Rockstar with the people I know and enjoy. Exactly. Yeah, I would be happy. Well, to that's that. the thing. I, I think. I think you you would probably think they're working on Grand Theft Auto Six next, but just how it's gone, you know, how the cycles go, they usually take turns. So right. if they were to do another Red Dead, it'd probably be yeah, a while's away anyway. You'd think, wouldn't? Yeah. It? Yeah. And then and then if it is another prequel, I would be probably fifty years old playing. Playing a- it. <laughs> 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 then we'd need a real filter, right? Have to put my in. Have to put my in. Oh, who knows? Uh, well, I get, yeah, I guess it would have to be a prequel, wouldn't it? We talked about this with um, I talked about this with Ben. A prequel to a prequel has never been done before in a gaming landscape, so it'd be new. It'd be new territory as well. Um, Crank Mambo, hey Rob, on Red Dead Two, did you get a kick out of bullying Uncle? And how were you off camera? Thanks again, Crank. <laughs> so, Crank Mambo, Crank. Crank Mambo. Thank you, Crank. Mambo. I don't know how they Thank come up so with these usernames, out, by man. the way. Sorry, I cut you off there. <laughs> so I cut you off there, Rob. No. Uh, no, you're fine. But no, yes. Okay, so th- I want to say that there were... There were um, different uncles okay so from red dead redemption to red dead redemption 2 those were different people that played uncle and then john o'cree who started in red dead redemption 2 actually died he passed away during so then they yeah and he was a really great guy and there's actually um o'cree's pass and Red Dead Redemption 2 is because of John O'Connor. Oh, kind of wow. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. And he's he was really a great guy and he got sick and he and he died. And it was it was sad. They got new uh they I think tried to find went through maybe three or four different people, had them shoot for a couple different weeks, trying to find the right fit. Like who can who can do this the way mm. that we want it done? And um they settled with the uncle that you know who uh when you hear the singing of uncle that's actually john singing it uh but the voice then was uh mac uh, <laughs> here i am with names again um it's all right but yeah so having fun with uncle is has always been something that i've enjoyed and because you what a character, right? I mean, no matter what you say to the guy, he's like, ah, Mumbago, you know, like, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and it just doesn't uh... face it, you know, he's just like, you can yell at me all you want. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, which is whatever, nothing, sleep, drink, whatever I want. And so you kind of love him, you know, even if you've got to play a character that's trying to really be tough on him anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Really, really cool. Um, working with with uncle as a character and then yeah in the green room hanging out mac i and uh, we called him mac and i can't remember exactly what his name is the guy that finished out the job as uncle was a really really cool guy and uh hopefully busy he was he was doing a lot of theater when we were finishing up so i don't know what that looks like these days but um yeah hopefully he's he's doing well isn't it amazing how they blend the comedy and the serious moments throughout the like you know it's got everything it's just <laughs> unbelievable uh right and respect love rob's work do you think john would have predicted that uncle 
would have went down protecting the ranch like he did after all the insults John threw at him. Oh, my goodness. Well, all right. So thank you so much, first of all, for, for your great question. Um, yeah, I don't, I think that uncle, yeah, I mean, I guess it's not a surprise. I mean, as much as John gave him as much as he could possibly give him. And like I just said, he was unfazed by it. I mean, he just was like, whatever, dude, do it then shoot me, but you won't. <laughs> And he did appreciate, you know, these, these people that were in this gang, that was their family. And, uh, I think everybody needs a family, right? We all do. We oh, all yeah. need a support group. Um, and you know, back in those days, you never knew whether you were going to walk down the road and come back or not. I mean, it just yeah. was wild west. So I think uncle was, yeah, just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be here. I'm going to tell all kinds of stories. I'm going to be entertaining. I'm going to drink everything I can if I want. Yep. And uh, they're going to love me. And you did. So, <laughs> uh, he, he, yeah. He, he, yeah. Yep. No, it's, I love, I love uncle Rob. Can I get a quick, Hey there partner from Zane. Zane. Hey there partner. <laughs> Man, that takes me back. Hey, eh? that's it's unbelievable. Uh, survivor from the old era. How did that squirrel statue end up at the top of that mountain? <laughs> uh, oh, shit. That squirrel. We had so much fun once we made it to the set. I mean, on set too, when we were doing the performance capture, the squirrel was a really, really fun thing. They actually had one made oh really <laughs> yes so much fun so we had this squirrel it's art like you don't know you don't she didn't appreciate it whatever abigail but then when we were <laughs> in the sound booth and i think i might have told you it was kind of rapid fire with a lot of the lines that we would say and so i was doing all this really intense yelling and who knows what it was that i was saying that john yeah. would say out of the damn way, all this stuff, and just yelling things one after another. And, and they would kind of, yeah, next, got it, got it, got it. And then this line, have you seen my squirrel? And it was a totally different section on the page. Like I didn't, I just was, I was in a rhythm and I was just going to keep going and going and going. And out of the damn way, have you seen my squirrel? And I look over, <laughs> they're like, no, no. <laughs> you did all that that section's over this is a different section oh. <laughs> <laughs> i mean almost everything about that squirrel oh was man so fun. it has a funny story tied to it oh that's brilliant oh, uh, i love yeah. that uh, uh maxi says um could you say the line the line stop shooting at me from red dead one Oh my goodness. I'm trying to think of how John said it. Stop shooting at me. I, I'm sure he was yelling. Yeah, I think he was yelling. Stop shooting at me. I don't know if that's, that's, if that sounds I think, like that's, it. I think okay. that's it. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Omega say, says, Sadie, Sadie and Charles are the last true gang members left alive. Any thoughts how their lives went? Um, my goodness. Oh, that's no. a tough one. Um, it is, right? Um, <laughs> Gosh, I, uh, I, I wish question. that I knew. You know what? We we all kind of really love the idea of a DLC with either of or both of them being playable characters. So you could see, because I think everybody kind of wants to know, you know, where did oh. they go? Because you don't see them in Red Dead Redemption. And you you, you kind of wonder why. Where, where did they go? Because they know where John and Abigail are. I mean, they know where Abigail and Jack are. I don't think it ended well. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know what happened, mm. but uh, yeah, it would be very, very interesting to, to learn more about that. Like the question early on about John's daughter. I want to know more about that. I want to know more about a lot of things and maybe someday we will and maybe we won't. I don't know. Who's this man in black, the stranger? What is that? Oh, there's you know? so many unanswered questions. But well, that's the fun of it, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, did you ever meet Dan Hauser, Rob? 
I, I did briefly. And uh, it's one of those things, you know, he, he's a writer. He's one of the genius writers. And I don't know exactly how many people contributed to writing, but that the majority of it, I think was Dan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met him just briefly one time uh, when I w was going in to do some work in a sound booth. And I said, Hey, I, I want to introduce myself to you. And he said, I know exactly who you are and was a very, very friendly, cool person. And I said, I, I don't want to take up any of your time, but I need you to know that I appreciate the opportunity and wow, you have changed my life in such an enormous way. And I wanted to say thank you and shake your hand. And he was, he was a very kind and cool person. And that was, that was about it. I mean, you know, we didn't try to just the one exchange. Yeah. People. Um, but busy, I mean, busy and, and oh. busy being creative. And, you know, he, he wasn't on set every day watching and he wa it wasn't like that at all. He was, he was doing his thing and it was, uh, yeah, just, I'm telling you, I, it, the, I don't know if it was him that, that just said, this is how this is going to be and we can do this. But if you, if you saw this environment with the, the support that these all people all had for each other. It could have been very, very cutthroat. It could have been, it probably should have been. If you think about what's at stake for these people and their jobs, but it was the opposite of that. And, mm. and people, you know, you got to imagine are the very best, whatever they're doing on the computers, the technology, whatever their role is, they're probably the very best in the world at it, you know? And it's it was really cool, really, really. Cool. I yeah, I honestly believe Rockstar. Are, if they're not the best developer in the world, they're in the top five, in my opinion. And I've and I've played games for 15, 20 years. I I I think I've I know what I'm talking about after playing literally every game, and their yeah. their games. You know that you're going to get a ten out of ten game every time they put out a game. You know. Wow. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. That that is that's the, i mean and at game after game you would think you know like somebody could pull that off one out of five exactly but if, it, yeah. if it's that consistent that yeah they're they want to make the best video game ever made every time every they time make, that's their goal not just we want to be better than the the competitor or we want to be better than our best ever every time so and GTA is uh, second most sell best-selling game of all time. So, you know, the yeah. numbers show, don't they? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Well, I'm, I I don't know what they're all up to now. I don't know that, you know, with COVID, how much they've been able to do, even, you know, like if they are mm. really into another game, I don't, I don't know what that would look like. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure that they're. I'm sure they're busy. I'm sure they're doing something. <laughs> I'll give you a couple more here, mate. I really appreciate it. Um, Ra Rasmus, uh, much love from Denmark. Sold my life. Much love, Tanner. Do you miss West Dickens this time around? Oh, is that that's a quote? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, Joel. My goodness, thank you so much for the question. Um, Yes, Nigel West Dickens. What a great character, right? <laughs> My goodness. One of, one of the things, too, that was so cool about this work is that John, John never really said a lot in Red Dead Redemption. He, he said things so you knew enough about him, but nobody wants to play a game where they're listening to the playable character talk all the time. They just want to do what they want to do with the playable character. So... I had the experience of going into a scene where I had to remember when to say, oh yeah, or uh, is that right? Or whatever it was to kind of break up these long, long paragraphs of information that these other characters yeah. were telling. And it was just fascinating. I thought there is no way I've seen this on, on paper, what this looks like, all of this stuff that you have to say. And remember, and perform. And Nigel West Dickens, if you go back and watch and, and think about, this guy got this on a piece of paper and he had to memorize all of it. 
And then his character so <laughs> quick, you know, and, went up, and it just to be able to spit that out, it was like, oh my goodness, this is awesome. Yeah. This is so cool. I'm so entertained, you know. Man, yeah, I really, I really wish Nigel his his uh snake oil, maybe uh just he hadn't figured it out yet in Red Dead Redemption 2, I guess, right? No. But I'm getting a lot of people here saying you eat babies, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that, that must be one you hear a lot oh my goodness yeah oh. the sasquatch the poor sasquatch oh my goodness <laughs> Heartbreaking. but yeah everybody knows that everybody knows that you eat babies we eat berries man yeah what what's the most what's the most requested lines that you get usually is it howdy partner it's it's you you eat babies it's you eat babies it is for sure yeah, yeah. so like now arthur morgan Everybody wants to hear Roger say Lenny. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's always been you eat babies or uh, what you eat or you're a beauty. A different thing like picking <laughs> out or skinning an animal, the different things like that. But you eat babies for sure is the most common. Yeah. <laughs> say this. Yeah. So yeah. funny. So <laughs> when you look back on both games, you just feel just, just immense gratitude. Just, just thankful so much gratitude yeah. um like i said you know life has a way of balancing itself out right where you you have this great experience but then there's something about it that's so bad that kind of balances it out right or yeah. no matter what it is that you're talking about it oh you know things are great here in your life but they're also non-existent here which is also important whatever i'm not kidding you the experience that i have had from the beginning until this point, even, I mean, I'm still enjoying my life is still so much affected by my participation in the Red Dead Redemption series. And it's honestly been, this has been so great. Like the entire thing has been so great. There's no downside. There has been no downside. There's nothing to balance it out. It's just all been great. And I've learned not only how to do performance capture right but i've also learned like this is this is what looks good when you see an actor do this i've learned i basically was in class for several years watching people teach me how to do the job that i want to be good at and i've and i've been exposed to inspiring um really cool well-educated people that are happy in their job and they're not grouchy and grumpy all the time and I've, I've been inspired by that. I've been taught how to uh, see life differently and, mm. and know that there are cool things happening and you can be a part of them. You have to try. It's not going to just come to you. You have to put yourself out there, however that looks. But you can enjoy that and have that experience. And I hope that everyone does because... It's, it, I've never had anything else in my life, certainly work-wise, job-wise, where I have been so pleased with every aspect and overwhelmed, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's, it's so great. And I know that my other castmates feel the exact same way. I know that they do. And it's, that's, it's been really, really great. Nothing but gratitude. Man, and it's been nothing but gratitude for me to have you on for the last two hours. It's been unbelievable, <laughs> mate. It's been a real pleasure. And, thank you um, so much, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for your work and just being such a a lovely guy. Great, great dad, great, great man. And just positivity. I mean, that's what we need, don't we? Yeah, well, thank you for thank you for saying those kind words. I appreciate it. Um but yeah, I mean, you know, let's Hopefully we're getting to the end. I got I got my first vaccine shot today. Oh, nice. So, yeah. I mean, it's uh, we're getting closer. They're getting down in the age level. I guess I'm not that young, but <laughs> I'm uh, trying to do my part. Let's try to get ourselves back to normal. And when we are normal again and can do what we want and, and need to do for ourselves and our happiness and our survival, right? Uh, be ready to hit the ground running and do it you know you've had time to gather 
your thoughts and think about what you want to do. I hope that people are motivated and ready to go out and live their life and live it, experience it, do cool things. Going to be scared, sure, but you're not going to be bored and you're going to learn something about yourself. And that's awesome. That makes you grow. That makes you confident. It's, I, I wish hopefully everyone can, can hit the ground run and, and get out there and do something awesome. Man, you, you sure you don't want to be a motion motivational speaker after that? I feel like I need to go for a two hour run, a marathon after this. You have got me pumped. Man, thank you. <laughs> I, I just think, you know, it's a, we've got a choice. We've always got the choice. How are we going to be affected by things going on in our lives? We choose how yeah. that goes. And, uh, you know, th th like I said before, nobody, nobody, is happy all the time. Nobody has got everything going right all the time. But if things are just going, not really high or low, make them high, make them good, make things good. Life is short. Do it. That's hopefully, hopefully that's uh, the right way. To do it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, man. Have you got anything else to say to the, to the fans out there now? Oh, no. I mean, thank you. Of course, obviously yeah. I, I appreciate all of you so much. And again, I love it that you're all cool with each other too. That's cool. Well, I mean, it's really great. And hopefully we can all get together face to face, shake hands, share some laughs, enjoy some time together. Oh, I look mate. forward to that if that can happen soon. Have you been to Australia before? You got to come down. No, oh. I really, really want to go really want to go there's a guy um his name is bluey his name is actually brody and i think it's brody 7188 i just wanted to give a shout out to him because he's a friend yeah that i've made through instagram nice uh and a really cool guy and so hopefully someday of course i want to meet you dan face to face check your <laughs> hand yeah. and and i want to meet my my man uh brody too oh, he's from australia nice yeah yeah I was oh, checking no. my, my internet connection and I went live on Instagram and I also thought I better see if I can still have a feed going if I connect with someone and I just picked a guy at random and it was Brody. And oh, now we're boys. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's cool. He's great. He's like a BMX dude and skater and he's he's cool. He's a cool kid. Oh so, well mate, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you for being so generous with your time. Um, before I let you go, is there anything, um, is there anything, uh, John can say to Dan here right now before we close this out? Yeah, you let me know. And before I say it, I want to thank you again. This has been really a cool experience for me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. No, thank you, man. Um, anything, man. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Whatever comes to your mind. Uh, oh my goodness. So I, I guess we might as well just do what, what they want to hear anyway. Dan, you eat babies. Everybody knows that. <laughs> now I'm going to have to have that in every video at the start. You know that, don't you? <laughs> you know that, don't you? That's going to be in the front of every video I upload from now on. <laughs> uh, all right, man. Well, have a, have a great day. I wish your family and yourself very well, safe, stay safe. And um, I look forward to doing this again someday, mate. That's so great, man. Thank you so much. Best to you and yours and everybody watching. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Appreciate All it. Right. Take care, man. Thanks. Wow. What a thrill. What a thrill that was, mate. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, guys. What a kind and amazing guy he was, eh? I mean, what a guy, really. If you want to if you want to look up to someone, that's who you look up to. Just such a nice guy. Absolute legend. I don't think anyone in here would disagree with, with me. 
Yeah, I mean, look. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Two hours with an absolute icon. A legend. Um, I mean, just a thrill for me to sit down and talk with him for that long. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I tell you what. What a voice. What a guy. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Dennis, Reba, you've been in here the whole time. Thank you. Eric, you're going to go play Red Dead 1? Yeah. Juan, Pavan, Madeline, DJ, Leo, Swishy. That was incredible. Hassan, thank you. Bob, great interview. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you, Max. Thanks you for tuning in. I know it's either late or early for you, brother. Thank you so much. Who cares, as always? Rena, great to see you. Just found the stream randomly. It was awesome. Thanks for a legendary stream. Initial, guys, if you if you aren't subscribed, please help me out. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. So every sub helps. Thank you so much. Killmonger, you've been here the whole time. Thank you, brother. Really appreciate it. 10 out of 10 epic game, mate. Thank you so much. Who do we want next from Red Dead, guys? Who do you think we should get on next? Micah? I think that'll be an awesome chat. Micah. Laura, it was super fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Extreme great live. Thank you. Guys, I I'm, I'm really appreciate the feedback. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Tahiti man. Good to see you, man. I woke up three hours earlier. Thank you, man. I mean, that is... That's amazing. Micah? Micah? Yeah. Sadie and Micah. Yeah, okay, guys. Look, I'll... I'll get in contact with them and we'll get this happening. I know Peter, who plays Micah, he um, actually reached out to him on Twitter and he did respond. He did respond. And he said he'd be down to do it. He said he'd be down to do it. So um, we'll have to get him on. And he follows me on, on Twitter now as well. He follows me. As you can see here, he, um, he follows me. So... We'll make it happen. I think we can make it happen, guys. Yep. And and Sadie. Sasquatch. <laughs> yeah. Found stream by chance. Happy to support and sub, man. Great interview. My girlfriend isn't thrilled. I paused the movie for two hours. <laughs> Shevchenko, mate. Thank you so much for the donation, brother. I really uh, Great questions, too. Uh, thank you so much, man. I really, really appreciate it. I'm glad you guys found this stream. You know, YouTube's finally working, hey? This bloody algorithm. You never know what it's going to do. But I'm so glad that um, a lot of you have found this stream. Looking forward to it. No, that'd be awesome. And I think Lenny would be great. I mean, we've got so many people that we can talk to, you know. So many great actors um i've already talked to obviously arthur morgan um roger so you can check that out if you haven't um i've talked to now rob and also benjamin davis who plays dutch so we've we've got plenty to go strange man i hope you get to a million subs mate i hope so too <laughs> thank you man i appreciate it you randomly saw this stream glad i'm watching and i'm sub well thank you i'm so glad I'm so glad. John is the backbone of most of us. Can't choose between the good or the bad. Yeah. 100%. Reba, looking forward to future Red Dead casts. Me too. I Honestly, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to do more. I think Micah's going to be next, eh? Hosea? Yeah. Who cares? Great questions as always. Thank you for the support, man. Gonna go to sleep. Wonderful stream. Take care, brother. Get the strange man. Oh yeah, we'll get we'll get Rob back at some point. I mean, what an interview. There's so much you can talk about with that guy, just about life in general. Let alone Red Dead. I mean, we we tried I think I covered a lot we covered a lot in that interview with Rob, but there's still so much that we can cover as well, you know. Nico Bellic, yeah. I mean, 
I have been talking to Ned Luke, guys. GTA Michael. So that's going to happen. And I have been talking to Damon Victor Allen from Cold War, who plays Woods. I've been talking to uh, Doug Cockle. That's how you say his name. Um, from The Witcher 3, obviously, Geralt. Geralt, however you want to say it. So we've got some, we've got some pretty good guests in the lineup. Micah as well, you know. Can you say Lenny? Lenny! Boy! Rob's a motivational speaker. He really is, isn't he? He's got me pumped after that interview. That was awesome. SA, you did miss it. We've just, we've just been with Rob for the last two hours. So this will go up as a VOD, though. And you'll be able to watch it all back. I'll, have in, I'll even have timestamps for you. For if there's some questions that you specifically wanted to see, I'll put timestamps. I'll go through, watch it again. And you can do that if you guys want to hear anything again. But I'm so glad you all enjoyed it. I'm an onion mason. Yeah, exactly. How about Ad Adler from Cold War? I've already done Adler, would you believe? Yeah. We need Franklin and Lamar in the future. Yeah. From GTA. That'd be awesome, man. Get David Hater. Oh, I know, Tanner. Wouldn't that be a thrill? Metal Gear Solid. It's funny, you know, you say all these names and I know exactly who you're talking about because I've just played everything. What about Connor from Detroit? Oh, I've, I have reached out to Brian. Haven't got a response yet, unfortunately, but you never know. He might he might come on one day. Thama, thank you for meeting. Thanks for the meeting, bro. It's really amazing to have the opportunity. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I'm here to help you guys try and connect with as as many of your many of the stars in video games as possible. And uh, you know, I love it. Absolutely love it. Nolan North would be hard to get. Yeah, he would. But I'd love to get Nolan North on. I'd love to get Nolan North on. I mean, there's just so many names, isn't there? But um, you know, Red Dead. I think we're going to get a few more from Red Dead and. And guys, if you are new, I, you can check out the playlist. I've done a bunch already that you might that might interest you. Cyberpunk, Red Dead, Call of Duty, Troy Baker. We had Troy Baker on, you know, considered one of the greatest voice actors there are. There is. We had him on for 45 minutes. What a thrill that was. So, I mean, trying to catch up on your streams for the longest time now. Finally caught one. Worth the wait, TJ. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And also, guys, if you if you want to go above and beyond, you can become a member of the Onion Army. You can become a member and get your name on the plaque here with these incredible people. Um, a little fun thing I do if you become a member. And we've had a few new members today that I'll have to get their names up here for the next stream, guys. But yeah, you can become a member and help me out if you want to go. That's above and beyond. But of course... You don't have to. Just being here and supporting the channel, leaving a like and subscribing, it, it's it's truly, truly helps me out. And it, it means a lot, guys. So I really appreciate it. Lenny would be awesome to have on here. He's one of my favorite characters. A freaking raging when he got killed. Ken, I know. I know, Ken. 100%. What are your thoughts on fixing John? Yeah, I've heard that a lot. Um, I, I don't really care, to be honest, mate. To be honest, yeah. I mean, I I don't play Red Dead anymore. Because I I, um, I don't play the online. I mostly played the, the full game. I would have put 250 hours in more to Red Dead 2. Discovered pretty much everything there is. And did, I actually did over 100 videos on the game on my channel. Um, so you can check those out as well. I went through all the Easter eggs back in the day. So, and and the first game as well. Extensively played the game. So I don't, yeah, I don't, I understand what people when people say that. But um, yeah, to be honest, man, it doesn't doesn't really affect me. Dead Man's Gun. Let's get that track on, eh? What a song that is. Who gets nostalgia from that song? Is it just me?
Yeah, guys, so I'll try and get Sadie on. I'll try and get Micah, Lenny. I mean, and some of the GTA guys. I think it'd be fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Play the compass from Red Dead 1. But I like this song, man. Dead, Dead Man's Gun. I need a super like button, John. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Are you want everyone wants compass, okay. If that's what you want, I'll deliver the goods. Compass, here we go. Do you know what my favorite song is from that game? Far away. Oh, we're going to get copyrighted, but um, I love the song too. I just realized we're going to get copyright struck. Shevchenko, Sean and Trelawney, please. I love the actor that does Trelawney voice. He was awesome in Session 9. That'd be awesome. 100% agree. Building, okay, here we go. Dennis, I want to say that your work is incredible and amazing. Thank you. Dennis, I mean, thank you so much. It means a lot. I really appreciate it, Dennis. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I really am. Far Away is the best. Yeah, do you guys agree? I, I, I mean, Far Away in the first game when you're riding, I mean, that, that'll stick with me. I thought that was unbelievable. Oh. I mean, I wanted to play the resec the section straight away again. It was just so... Oh, I'll never forget it. Never forget it. House building theme, yeah. You gotta love it, eh? The Last of Us actors. Yeah, gamer girl. Um, we've had Troy on. I've tried Laura Bailey and, and Ashley Johnson, but um, they've declined, unfortunately. But, you know... There's other actors we can get. <laughs> this song. Unshaken as well, yeah. Oh, who can forget Unshaken from Red Dead 2? I mean, that was so... And it, it was so many parallels from the first to the second. You know, you got John dying. And it was a similar, it was in a similar fashion as Arthur in terms of how they talk to their loved ones and, and how it played out in that sense. And then, of course, when they're riding on the horse, those songs come on. Very similar stuff, and they did that on purpose. So, Corona Spa, thank you so much. An onion master, he went above and beyond. He's not just an onion lover, he's an onion master. Thank you so much, man. Really, really appreciate it. Love to have you here, man. Love to have you here. I hope you're enjoying the show. This song is really a classic, isn't it? Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm on a high after that interview. I mean, that was just unbelievable. That, that is one of my favorites ever. Just so fun. You can't help but smile talking to talking to Rob. He's just such a nice guy. I'd love to play Far Away, Unshaken. I'd love to play him all, but I'll get copyright strike, guys. I mate, I'd be the first to play him. I really would. I want to know, guys, what are you playing right now? What games are you playing right now? Give me a give me a couple of games you're playing right now, because it is a time. It is a time now where um, I'm going to get this song on quickly. It is a bit of a slow period, you know, for gaming. Not much has come out recently, you know. Um, so I want to know what you're playing. Alex McKenna, I'd love to. I'd love to. So you're playing Cyberpunk, Red Dead Online. I'm playing Red Dead. I mean, guys, I know you're playing Red Dead. 
I meant besides Red Dead. <laughs> We're all, you know, we all love Red Dead too. Is there anything else besides Red Dead that you're playing? Let me know. Doom, Doom. I love Doom Ancient Gods. Yep. Uncharted. Great game. Amazing game. Ezio Collection Expert. Third Eye. Mafia. Ooh, I got to play the Definitive Edition Third Eye. Something I haven't played. I played Mafia. But I've never played that Definitive Edition that came out last year. Valheim. Is that still going strong, Eric? Valheim? State of Decay 2. GTA 2K17 WWE. Oh, a few glitches in that one, isn't there? Or is that the one that's all right? GTA 6, State of Decay. I mean, you guys are very Ghost of Tsushima. I did an interview with Jin, by the way. I'm replaying Watch Dogs. Second Son, Watch Dogs. Shadow of Mordor. Okay, you're really very... There's not, a, there's not one game, that's for sure. I love the variety though, guys. AC Valhalla. I did one with uh, Eivor. If you want to check that out, I did an interview with him. Uh, Magnus. Left for Dead. Skyrim. Devil May Cry. Nice. Shit. You guys are very... I love it. I love it. Yeah, at the moment, I'm playing... Um, I'm playing through a game called It Takes Two. Just came out. Incredible co-op game, guys. Uh, if you... If you've got a friend to play with, if you buy the game, the friend can play for free with you online. It's called It Takes Two. Really fun. I recommend it. And anything else recently, I recommend Hitman 3 was incredible. And I got the chance to talk to him as well. David Bateson, who plays Agent 47. An iconic role. Hitman 3. If you've never played Hitman series, jump into 3. You'll love it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you guys. Take take my recommendation it is a fantastic game christopher judd oh wouldn't that be a dream interview one kratos from god of war i mean wow kst you're an incredible interviewer i mean thank you so much uh, you know i've only done about 20 23 24 so you know i'm, I'm still relatively new but i try to keep things positive i try to make the guests feel welcome and and I ask the questions that we all want to know. I mean, you know, a lot of these guys have done interviews before, so we want to try and ask some new questions, ex exciting questions. So we try to ask, get a nice balance of some things we've heard before and some new. Because, you know, Rob, he would have been asked every question under the sun about Red Dead. So I think we got some, some new stuff out of him. Which is cool. But yeah, I try to keep it um, light and, and, you know, just like two mates hanging out, you know. It's it's not... it's not. A, I try to not look at it as an interview. It's more like two mates hanging out. And I've had, you know, the fortune, the last... You know, Judy, Carla yesterday and Rob today. I mean, both really, really incredible human beings. Really are. And I, we wish them all the success in the world. Okay, you want American Venom again? I mean, that's my favorite track, so. Ah, oh, what a track. I mean, what a... F I let them talk, exactly. I tr Look, yeah, I, I try to just let them go and let them talk, you know. Serena, Dan, I just subscribed. Awesome interview. And yes, Micah would be enjoyable. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Who else loves this song? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. What do I play? Yeah, no. As I said, those games. I play... Name a game I've played. Every game you guys named before, I've played. Dead set. This is what I do, guys, for a living. I've played every game. Dead set. I mean, that's a lie. But, you know, the big triple A's, I've played most of them. Could you get Craig Fairbrass? I had him on this week. The original ghost. Gaz from Modern Warfare. Knife for Watermelon. 
Nice, your fruit killing skills are remarkable. What's the other one he says? Um, Mission fail. We'll get him next time. <laughs> he was a blast. He was he was a blast. We had him on. Kilsey, can I ask you something? Go ahead. Now's the chance. Yeah, badass theme, Jeffrey. Jefferson, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's such a cool, it's such a cool theme. This one. Only Michael could get shot six times in the head and try and walk it off like a. Ch <laughs> now, what poster do you think I should get, guys? So I'm, I want to get a Red Dead poster. I don't know if I should get one or two. So I got Doom Eternal here, with Doom guy and his bunny, right? I got the Uncharted poster, my favorite series of all time, right? And, you know, fingers crossed we get the 100k plaque at some point on YouTube. We're at 90k subs. Fingers crossed this year, all goes well. We'll get the plaque, we'll get it up somewhere. But what other posters do you reckon I should get? Get a Red Dead one here. Maybe... Yeah, I don't know. Just Vincent, we need Aussie Gaz. I, I know you've said that a few times. I think Aussie Price has, has, he could, it could be it for him. That might be his last hurrah. Would Nolan North be possible? I think it would be possible. He's just, I know he's very busy at the moment. So I'm, I have reached out. I haven't got a response, but I'll keep trying, you know. I can't wait for the next Resident Evil. Me too. I can't wait. For Resident Evil Village, and I want to interview Lady Demetriscu. I've always said I really hope I can get that interview. I really hope we can get that conversation going. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Red Dead Three. What do I think it should be about? I think you got to have Rob in the game. You got to have John Marston, and you got to have Dutch. You got to have Ben in the game. And even Arthur, I'd love to see all three at some point. I don't know. I I just don't know if it's Red Dead without without Rob. I, that's just my personal opinion. I think his voice is synonymous with the series and that character. Ghost of Tsushima poster would be cool. Oh, I love Ghost of Tsushima art. And we've got the movie coming out. We've got the movie announced. Did you see that? Hmm. Yeah, I'd love that. That'd be amazing. What is the best character for Red Dead 2? Arthur Morgan. Arthur Morgan and John Marston. And Dutch. <laughs> so all the three guys I've, inter I've uh, interviewed. Uh, for Red Dead 2, Arthur. For Red Dead 1, John. The playable character. I know it's a, it's a bit of a cop-out answer, but that's just, you know, I just connected with those guys, you know. Alex, you're from Tasmania, man. Thanks for stopping by. You excited for Far Cry 6? I am excited for Far Cry 6. So I'll be covering Resident Evil Village and Far Cry 6 on the channel. And hopefully get some of the actors on as well. From both games. Tall Vampire Lady, exactly. There's endless posters to be made with Red Dead 2. Oh, the screen... Ugh, I know. The screenshots and the community around some of those shots is unbelievable from what I've seen. Crazy. Toby, you are a great YouTuber and interviewer. Toby... It means a lot, man. It really does. Thank you for the kind words. Great to have you here, man. Will the movie follow the game's story in Ghost of Tsushima? I'm not sure. Yeah, they guys, they did announce. They announced the Last of Us TV series. You got a Ghost of Tsushima movie, an Uncharted movie, and a Twisted Metal movie. Sony. Sony are working on a bunch of movies on their IP. God of War. Ken, you've sold me. God of War poster. 100%. God of War and Red Dead, I think. I think God of War and Red Dead. You know, I might actually go the original Red Dead. I might go the original. Who do you want to interview most at the moment? Um, You know, I'm just happy to get anyone on, man. And... and uh, there's not a specific well, I mean I'd love to get Nolan North if we have to go specifics I'd love to get Nolan North uh, or Christopher Judd from, from Kratos but 
you know, I'm, I'm every interview I've had, I've had the pleasure. Everyone's been nice. I mean, I, I must be lucky. I don't know, or I'm rubbing him the right way. But every single interview I've had has gone well. I think, has gone well, and I, and you know, most of the guests have have enjoyed themselves from what I've heard. So, um, I mean, yeah, I've, I've been very fortunate. What do I think GTA Six will be about, Western Cowboy? I mean, who knows, eh? I just want them to release the damn thing. I want the game to come out. Just, just work on it. Give us something, you know? You're hyped from the movies. Yeah, I'm hyped, Dennis. I really am. I'm, I'm hyped. Although, Uncharted movie, I'm a bit... Uh, I mean, hyped, but... Not, re not hugely hyped. You know what I mean? Like, I'm excited to watch all these movies, but I'm not fully hyped. Like, I watched Kong vs. Zilla the other day, and, you know, those two fighting, I, like, I was laughing. I was like a kid in a candy store watching those two fight back and forth. It's crazy, but the actual movie and the storylines at play aren't great. You know what I mean? If it didn't have the fighting and the big units that they are, you know, it would be a bad movie, pretty much. So I'm hoping that they can handle Nathan Drake and Uncharted and these characters well. So we'll see. Life is Strange. I, I like Life is Strange. I wouldn't say I love it, Gamer Girl. But I do like the game. I've played um, the first one. And the second. Yeah, and the second. Yeah. Oh, Roger Craig Smith, Sergeant Thompson. I know. He, he's Sonic. He's Batman. He's Who isn't he? You know? Yeah, Red Dead Unnightmare 2, I don't know. I don't know if they'll do it. I just feel like they won't do it. x -Sword. I've met Nolan. He's an amazing and funny guy. He really is. I've, I've seen a lot of interviews with him. He's such a genuine guy. Nice man. I think we'd have a blast talking Last of Us Uncharted, Deadpool. I mean, Destiny 2. There's so many games he's I think we'd have a blast, me and him. I hope it happens. I mean, I'd be... I would be, you know, there's a there's a reason that's there, you know, there's a reason. I know, we need more video games out. I'm looking forward to Resident Evil Village and Far Cry 6. They're the two upcoming games that I hope come out soon that I'm looking forward to, yeah. Oh, the Assassin's Creed movie, it wasn't good, was it? Noob. I mean, it was a shocker. It was a stinker. So we, I agree, man. I really hope, uh, you know, I just didn't like that movie. And the, oh, the Monster Hunter movie as well. Not great, man. They haven't had a good track record. I didn't mind the Tomb Raider movie. Didn't mind it. Wasn't amazing. Wasn't, wasn't even great. But I thought it was at least good. But again, a lot of people didn't like that either. Am I playing Cold War? I mean, I'm always dabbling into Call of Duty. Yeah, I do a lot of Call of Duty on the channel, as a, as a lot of you know. Stefano, Troy Baker would be a good guess. Type in Troy Baker, Dan Allen. See what comes up. It might be a nice surprise for you on this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, wherever you are in the world. We had a great chat, me and Troy. No, I'm take care, mate. Take care. Jim Milton. <laughs> Jim Milton's here, eh? How funny. My favourite actor in gaming. Nolan North. Probably. I don't know. I love Rob. But he's only in the two games, you know. And I've just had, had him on. Oh, the Dragon Ball movie. I know, Vincent. I know. And ba so, I mean, it's going to be a good year, guys. You got those two games. You got. We're going to have a new Call of Duty, a new Battlefield. Um, Horizon is supposed to come out, the sequel to that. You've got a little game called Returnal, which I think could be good. Um, what else have we got, guys? I mean, it's actually quite a big year, if you think about it. 
Um, although there will be delays, like Gotham Knights delayed recently. Um, we've got Ratchet and Clank, the sequel to that on PS5. That'll be fun. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, you know, you've got... Dying Light 2, do I reckon that's coming out this year? Don't know. Should be a decent year. I think, it, you know, it, COVID obviously takes takes a hit. But, um... The MK movie, I am hyped. It was shot here in Australia, from memory. And I'm very hyped. Very, very hyped for it. Favorite actor in Hollywood, Alex. I love Hugh Jackman, being an Australian. I think his performance in Logan incredible. Uh, I love Tom Hardy, Christian Bale. Um, Morgan Freeman, you know. Here's a question for you guys. Your favorite movies? Favorite movie or movies? Mine personally, my favorite movie of all time is The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan. I think it's an, I think it's just one of the best movies ever. Heath Ledger puts on the performance of a lifetime. That's my favorite movie, probably. The Dark Knight. I know it's a comic book movie, but it really isn't. You know, it's very dark. Never, never before seen that sort of dark. You know in a comic book you know it paved the way kai i'm subscribing kai thank you so much i really appreciate it lord of the rings lucy oh i mean that's got to be in the top five for me as well 100 percent agree the trilogy 10 out of 10 pretty much every movie 10 out of 10 joker movie loved it 10 out of 10 loved it aliens Love Aliens and Predator, yep, love it. Black Hawk Down, great movie. The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, another great... I mean, you guys are on fire. Great movies. Star Wars, Rogue One. Rogue One, I reckon, is the best Star Wars movie of the last 10 or so years, you know? Of the recent ones, last 10, 20 years. I think Rogue One's unbelievable. Harry Potter, I actually bought the Blu-ray set of Harry Potter. I'm going to go back, because I just don't remember how it all planned out, funnily enough. So I am going to go back and watch all of them. Inception, Apex Devil. Oh, another brilliant Nolan film. I mean, what a film that was, Inception. I watched it last year again for about the seventh time. The Dollars Trilogy, of course. Of course. Gladiator, another brilliant film. Russell Crowe, another Aussie. Alex, yours is The Dark Knight. I'm glad to hear it, man. Terminator 2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are you guys are picking great. Sure shake. You, you're literally going through my top 20 films. This is hilarious. These are all like 10, 9, 10 out of 10s. So funny. I'm glad we're on the same page. Fellow Dark Knight lover. Best movie trilogy ever. I, I agree, Demolish. I really do. Oh, you know what? I might say Lord of the Rings just slightly beats it, but I think Dark Knight is the best film. It's, it's tough, you know. It's tough. Tahiti Man, thank you so much, man. Subscribing with notifications. I mean, that is... Can't get much better than that. Saber Gaming, you're subscribed. I mean, guys, thank you. Indiana Jones, except... Hey, you didn't have to say except Crystal Skull. I know. I know, brother. I actually got the Blu-ray of them as well. Indiana Jones the other day. Jedi, Tenet and Tun. You love Tenet? Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I love Tenet last year. My favorite film of last year. Loved it. But I'm a, I'm a proclaimed Nolan fanboy. I've, I've always said it. Nolan, my favorite director. He just is my favorite director. I love every film he's done. I love. Just a fanboy. I, I admit it. I admit it. I'm a fanboy. You know. At least I'm a self-aware fanboy. Django, Jaws, Jurassic Park, O'Clock. I mean, guys, I haven't seen a bad movie here. 
Irishman, okay, that's one. Okay, Irishman, too long. But I'm a hypocrite for saying it's too long. Because I just watched... <laughs> I just watched Zack Snyder's A Justice League and I thought it was great and it was four hours so you know I'm a hypocrite <laughs> yeah I'm a hypocrite I think you should get Hitman 3 Hassan I really do I think you should all get Hitman 3 I think it's a phenomenal game I really do I really do Reba thank you so much interstellar snowy i mean what a movie transformative movie the docking scene you remember it you remember it snowy i mean jaw on the floor sort of stuff from the docking scene jaw on the floor sort of stuff when you see that i mean ah, oh. can't get much better than that Hans Zimmer is my favorite composer. Hans Zimmer is my favorite composer. You like the Snyder cut? The Snyder cut? The Snyder cut, Mr. Man? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy. I haven't seen Falcon and Winter Soldier. What do you think, Chrono? Should I watch it? I haven't seen it. I got Man uh, Hitman Three Deluxe. Tommy Miller. Yeah, good on you, man. You'll love it if you haven't already played it. Uh, I love the docking scene. The soundtrack's incredible. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It really is. It's incredible. All right, guys. I'm going to leave you there. It's been an absolute pleasure. You guys can subscribe to the channel. It really, it really means a lot if you do. Leave a like on the video. Share it with a friend. You know, all that good stuff. And um, you could also become a member, as I said of the onion army you know every member every sub it means a lot we're getting to 100k we are getting there we're so close we are at 90 90,500 90,500 yeah so we're close we're close appreciate it guys hope you had fun i had a blast hope you had fun guys take care About to come into the light Your hands upon A dead man's gun